Take it away, Irving Berlin. Um, wait, I I had it in my head earlier today, but now it's gone. Uh, heaven, okay. So that's cheek to cheek. I don't know the words. I probably should have just had them up, but I didn't. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Showgaze Movie Music Podcast. Today is a very exciting day because we have since. Our first guest since we have we are in this revival session, mm-hmm. okay. The not, uh, the Molly era, the Molly period. period. Right. Yeah. Maybe, other than the moms that we did interview, other than, still the, have not other than the moms, anything. which we have interviewed and we have not released because you know Mother's Day is an event and you never know. <laughs> um, but we have with us today we have Brandon. Um, do you want me to say your last name? I'm probably just gonna say your first name. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's either is good. <laughs> okay. This is Brandon. Um and uh he's joining us today because we watched top hat hello brandon hello everybody thank you so much for having me now we invited brandon because he made a he and his partner made a comment once that brandon used to like dance or something along that line and then i said what a perfect opportunity to ask if you would like to join an episode of showgaze because we have been deprived of of well not deprived but we always kind of say like dancing in a movie musical is something that is hard to capture it's hard to capture mm-hmm. absolutely and uh us three don't really have that much dancing experience so you already kind of are by default a subject matter expert um in that regard so that's why we brought you here how many as years as of inside. dance did you take now we have to get to the nitty-gritty oh, now, right. but now dance it's dance. time to actually all right girl, girl if girl you me. are <laughs> You, you, are, are qualified. you were in swing choir for a year. Is that is that the deal? <laughs> no, I was, I, I like to refer to myself as a uh, dancer who could match pitch. So I was okay. the best of the chorus in a number of musicals, but I did study dance for maybe like 13, 14, 15 <gasps> wow. years, yeah. something like that. Early elementary school, all the way through college. Wow. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite style? I'm assuming you did a lot of styles in 13 years. So what was your favorite style that you like to do? Uh, I think it's interesting that we find ourselves together because around like late middle school, the dance school where I studied, it was like, Mm -hmm. it was really focused on ballet and classical Mm -hmm. um, dance. And then they started producing musicals. And I think that's really where I actually hit my stride. So like my, my preferred styles of dance, like as I finished or stopped dancing consistently was, um, tap dancing actually, which is great for this. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, favorite musicals, 42nd street, hands down. Mm -hmm. Mm. So planting a seed, maybe, mm. maybe. Um, I could do the whole opening number by memory still. Um, wow. and theater, uh, yeah, and theater dance. So, um, you know, chorus boy through and through. Wow. So does your preferred style that you like to do, does it match your preferred style that you like to watch? Because like I, mm. I like doing jazz and like that style, but I love to go to see a ballet. Because like yeah, professional think- ballet is... I think I would still, pref- if I was like spending money on a ticket, I would still spend money on like a ballet for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have the Nutcracker at the Joffrey and I really want to go. Oh. Famous Christmas ballet. Um, <clears throat> okay, great. Thank you so much for yeah letting our listeners only, know about that. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so, I only sorry. did it for 12 years, but that's fine. Um, oh I need God. to do the explanatory <laughs> comma. Um, Nutcracker is a Christmas ballet written and composed by... Uh, Hey, Stanislavski Tchaikovsky? What, Tchaikovsky. Is his first name? <laughs> what is his first name? Anton? Peter. Pe- oh, Peter. 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 Well, Peter. I'm sure he's good with a Russian accent. Pietro, probably. Okay. Well, that was thrilling. Thank you so much, Brandon. Um, Very excited to have some so- new life on the episode today. And mm-hmm. honestly, I, I gave RJ an out. I was like, we can make Brandon do, do the summary, the summary yeah. challenge. And he was like, no, I don't want to put him through this. 
which means that I mean, we think... are going to have to suffer through RJ's attempt at a one minute summary. So I think really... the real challenge would have been to like recreate one of the sequences. That would have been a true test of the expertise. <gasps> oh, but And the, honestly, yes. because honestly... it's only audio medium, we could have just been like, absolutely, slay, you did it. And no one <laughs> yeah. would know if you did it or not. It's both just us hand. reacting. I would yeah. Yeah. Doing... Foley, just Foley. 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 And now yeah. he is spinning. And old, then old uh, and he's tapping you wouldn't yeah. know. fast. Oh my God. The way you spun. Yeah. The flaps. Flap ball change. Bu- buffalo. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle the buffalo. <laughs> buffalo, buffalo. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, RJ, this week you have one Ugh. minute to summarize the I... plot of Top Hat starring Fred Astaire and Ginger <sighs> Rogers. I, I do feel like I have to call it that. I was so mad when I saw that it was my turn. I had a feeling, and then I looked at the spreadsheet, and I was like, Ugh, "Truly, do- what is an easier one? To, what What is with you two complaining recently that these are <laughs> unsummarizable movies? Oh, there's just so much happening. So much happening. It's a It's an a hundred minute movie. <laughs> Okay, Okay. RJ, this is your one-minute challenge. Your time starts now. Jay Travers is invited to London to star in a show by his friend and producer Horace Hardwick, and during his stay at his hotel room, his fancy free tapping wakes a Dale Tremont Tremont downstairs. This sets up their will-they-won't-they get together, but a misunderstanding in identity where Dale thinks Jerry is actually Horace uh, and therefore wooing her in infidelity against her friend Madge causes Dale to reject Jerry's charms and slaps him. Horace sends his valet Bates to spy on the situation. During the premiere, Jerry discovers the, the misunderstanding what? and asks to join Horace as he meets Madge and Dale in Italy. The misunderstandings continue in Italy, including Dale's sponsor, question mark, a dressmaker named Bellini who wants to avenge Dale's honor. Confused with who is who, Dale hastily marries Bellini, forcing Jerry to clear up all mistaken identities. Everyone discovers the truth, and the wedding was invalid and the wed- was invalid because it ended up being the valet of Bates in, a- in disguise. So Dale and Jerry dance together finally as a couple. Now, I did write this as the movie was happening because I was like, I don't want to miss any important details. But I think that ended up working against. It's I think really, so. Yeah, because you now I'm you like, overcomplicate all the that. important details. Maybe it's a Christopher it's... Nolan film, really, if you think <laughs> about it in terms of the <laughs> level of focus one has to have. Yeah. To yeah. Have you top seen Inception? Hat. It's got nothing on top half. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, not. absolutely. I think not. RJ sometimes the the trouble is that you try to put things in the order that they're revealed rather than the yeah. order that they happen because like mm. you don't need all the words of. The wedding was invalid because it ended up being the valet Bates in disguise. Do you see what I yes, mean? Like yeah, the wedding yeah. was performed by Bates. It's like a much yes, that's true. Get to yeah. it in the moment it happened. And he's, yeah. he's a valet, yeah. not a valet. Valet. Did I say valet? I think RJ I said, did. I said valet. Okay. It's a, he's a valet. valet. Okay. Okay. Well, well that was. You I will know, take that note. We're do. We're get. It's get. I will say it's getting better. At least I'm Molly, writing one do down. That seemed <laughs> close to a minute to me. I wasn't doing the timing. I yeah. didn't look at. I wasn't looking at the clock. I'm no, I, I did. It. I should. I should. Well, we'll just find out. We'll in find post, out if it post. fits yeah. in the in the the timer. But I think, like in the future, I'll, I'll. You know, it's good to look back at the work that you put in, and so I think, I in a second reading, uh-huh. I could have been like, uh-huh. oh, I'm repeating a lot. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So maybe just do the second reading next time. <laughs> Copy editing by Molly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. She's like, I will send you my Venmo for that. I will, I will copy edit all summaries before the podcast records for an extra 5% stake in the equity of the podcast. In the, for more stock. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, yeah. When we, you know, when we, all the sales for our live show at Sidetrack, you know, you want 5%. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. You gotta be, you gotta be there. On, on a Monday. On a Monday. Absolutely. Which it is. It is Monday. Yeah. Yes. This is why we, we record- never go to musical, musical Mondays yeah. anymore. The peek behind the curtain is that we often record on Mondays, everyone. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to spoil that, but I couldn't no. mess it up. No, there's nothing to spoil, really. <laughs> it's the least exciting Not spoiler in, in history. Fred and Ginger movie, that's for sure. That's true. They do end up together. It's kind of their whole thing. <laughs> Brandon, um, I have a question for you, and I'm going to ask it as it is written on the page, because I like to get myself into a, into a conundrum weekly where I rephrase the question so it doesn't make sense. Brandon, what is your relationship to Top Hat? Uh, I have never, I had never seen it before this watch, so I had no relationship to it. However, immediately upon watching, I realized that I had seen the opening scene uh, like a dozen times because it is used as a bit at the Alamo Draft House, which is a movie theater here and elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And they're known for, uh, like, you have to be quiet in the theater, you'll be asked to leave. That's their whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition to eating during the film, but. 
uh, the opening scene when they're in the club and they're telling Jerry to be quiet, uh, they use that as a bit oh, to fun. introduce the idea that you need to be quiet, you'll be asked to leave at Draft House. So mm. we were watching it. I was actually watching it with Jeff. And as soon as it started, we both looked. And I think for a moment, I thought like, oh, this is a preview of something because I'm just so used to it being yeah. <laughs> something that precedes a movie. But we realized that this was the reference for it, which also means all along, I didn't even know it was Fred Astaire. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah well wait, wait, so you ha- Brandon, so have you really, seen a, i'm really have you seen uh, a lot establishing of, credibility <laughs> yeah have you seen a lot of other fred astaire movies or any fred astaire movies before this no i think and 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 i as i was thinking about this it's really because i think i'm i would just grew up more of a gene kelly person oh mm. we're gonna do a gene kelly i mean it's fred honestly astaire. the great the great cultural divide of the 30s and 40s are yeah. you a, are Honest. you do, before there was edward and <laughs> Well, there was Team Edward and Team Jacob. <laughs> there was Team Gene and Team um, Fred. Team Fred, absolutely. And, and I that's, think, yeah. that's and where you drew the line. I'm coming out today as Team, team Gene. Team the Gene. first time you've ever come out. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ma- first, uh, well, Actually, first time on air. <laughs> I'm gonna, Molly, I'm gonna I'm gonna save you for last because I okay. we all kind of have similar relationships. RJ, you, me. The, uh, this is my first time mm-hmm. watching this. This is my first Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movie. Um, my previous knowledge of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers is just through the zeitgeist, knowing their names. And also uh, Madonna's Vogue, Ginger Rogers, Dance on Air. Um, mm-hmm. I knew I knew some of the music because Irving Berlin and also um, a lot of these songs were, and most Berlin songs, were usually the go-to songs chosen for like big band night on American Idol. Sure. Um, and as the, Amer- as the American Idol subject matter expert, that is where <laughs> I bring my I expertise. think we call those standards standards yes yeah. absolutely you mean american idol that's you mean the american standard. idol right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes the winners those are the standards so i had heard the first time i ever heard cheek to cheek was uh on big band night on american idol season three sang by who george sang huff george huff i don't remember who that is he was the who last lose to he was the last man that was standing. fantasia he was the last man standing yes he lost in fantasia season wow so, yeah well i'll go <laughs> I also You're the host. Seen... It's weird. The host. Do you want us to tell you to go? Sometimes it'd be nice. I have never seen a Fred and Ginger movie, which is crazy because... You're, are you also Team Gene? Um, no, I was Team Neither because I famously had never even seen a Gene movie until we watched <laughs> Singing in the Rain. The fact that you were awarded a degree in theater is... <laughs> It's shot baffling seen. sometimes. Awarded. Yeah, I did awarded. not earn it. To be honest, I did not earn <laughs> it. I was <laughs> awarded it. Um, you were bestowed. It was yeah. a participation award, in all honesty. It was an honorary award. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or honorary degree. degree. Honorary, honorary degree. degree. Um, I'd never seen a friend Ginger. Um, I really think, like, the earliest musicals my mom would rent are just, like, the Rodgers and Hammerstein ones. Because um, mm-hmm. I think those were the ones, like, she grew up with. So she just, like had a touch point for them. So that was the ones she wanted to show me. Um, so yeah, I just, I've, I, I don't think I've ever, I think this might be the oldest movie I've ever seen, which is crazy. Oh. I mean, like I grew up with Wizard of Oz. So like that's, yeah, that's but that's 39. Okay. So um, this cabinet of Dr. Calgary, <laughs> when was that? <laughs> the clips we watched to learn about expressionism. Does that count? Oh, yeah. God. That would assume that I was probably at class that day. <laughs> so I think that was the same day as Not I, so that may have been. That would have been a lot for us to handle in one class, Not I and. And Caligari. Oh my God. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I'll spoil my review and say I was pleasantly charmed by this film. So it, mm. it makes sense why they were who they were. Um, Molly, um, did you also get an honorary degree in theater or did you earn your degree in theater <laughs> by watching Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers film? I think that, uh, listeners will have to write in with their opinions on whether or not I've earned my degree in theater. Um, I, just your bachelor, it, just the bachelor, just my bachelor. That's I'm still, I'm still working on really proving that I earned that. Uh, I, as listeners have maybe guessed by the fact that nobody else on this podcast had ever seen it before was the one who brought Top Hat to the pod. Mm -hmm. Um, my parents owned a box set of VHS Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire movies. Mm. Um, and this one was my favorite of the bunch. Although I would say a close second is Roberta in which, uh, Ginger Rogers plays a model. And so there's like even more gowns. It's just gowns for days. Second time today I've heard that reference. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
So love this movie. Have a very um, vivid memory of, okay, there was a game we used to play on the playground in elementary school Mm -hmm. that was like sort of a combination of red light, green light and hangman where you were like, there was like a person in the front and they had thought of a movie and then people would like guess letters and they could step forward with the correct guesses. And then what grade was this? It was last year. Sophomore, freshman I want to say. It was the third year of her master's. um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Year three. It was the thesis, Um, actually. (laughs) I was defending my thesis through this. That's a very advanced game for children. It is a very advanced game. True. Yeah, because you have to be able to spell and stuff. Maybe more fourth, fifth. I don't remember exactly. But so the thing was that you had to have the movie, and then people would like try to spell it, and then when they guessed it, you could like come all the way up to the and you pick. So it's Wheel of Fortune (laughs) meets Red Light Green Light. Yes. Got it. And. I, when I was it, did top hat and everyone could not get it because they were like, what the heck what is, the hell hell like, is it? you know? It's too it fat. Familiar. P-H-A-T. Um, yeah, we were very into that, that word at that time in the zeitgeist. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to be Ginger Rogers when I was a kid. Uh, oh, I want to be Ginger Rogers now after seeing this movie. Oh my God, movie. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I do always like when people ask me about like, what was your like trajectory of your career? I like to start with, well, when I was a child, I wanted to be Ginger Rogers. And then I learned that like, you don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> you don't get to be like an <laughs> sure. acting, singing, dancing star in the movies anymore. And then mm-hmm. all the different paths I took in theater as a result. So yes, very beloved film for me. I'm excited mm-hmm. that Adam liked it. And I'm anxious to find out how everybody felt watching the movie for the first time i hope someone comes in and goes this was bad i really like even if it's not your take just make it the take for the app and like give us some give us some listens uh someone will want to listen to people talking about how bad this movie is that the angle you all called me in for just because i'm known as being a contrarian is that what this is about absolutely this is your time to shine um yeah i have nothing else to say great Um, so this movie Top Hat, it is based on two things. So there's a movie uh, called Scandal in Budapest by Sandor Farago, uh, which was a, I didn't look, I really honestly couldn't find a lot about the two things it's based on. So there is Scandal in Budapest, which was like a film made in like um, Germany post Universal's European arm of their company leaving and moving to Hungary um, because... Oh the head of their division was Jewish and that oh. Hitler had already enacted like enough, enough of that. So he was like, well, let's go over here. So that, so it's based on that. And then there's also a girl who dares, which is allegedly a 1911 play by Aldor Laszlo. And I couldn't find a thing about this. <laughs> Not anything, nothing, nothing exists on the internet about this play, except a reference to this Wikipedia article. <laughs> so I was like, this might not be real. This, I don't this know. This is uh, a deep Wikipedia prank. Yeah, this, this <laughs> yeah. is the one. Did you just show me a TikTok that like? Yes, I sent it to Molly too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah, it was in that group chat. Yeah, it is possible to lie on Wikipedia. Don't forget. So <laughs> you know, somebody really wanted to get in here and mess up this version. It's their, a, this episode of. It's an anagram. Alador Laszlo is an anagram. And we'll I am Lord Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, that's what it's based on. Again, I couldn't find really anything about it. But honestly, when everything is based on something, especially in like this time period, it's not even like they're adapting it. They're, just they're fully like, just like, it would, now it's translated to English and we're just doing it. <laughs> so I, I, I would assume it's pretty take, similar. Like, take the set piece out from Budapest and move in Venice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's directed by Mark Sandrich, who is a fascinating character. He was originally a... Um, Hold on, let me find it. I'm so sorry. I should have had up. He was a physicist before making films. So he made blueprints for every scene so he knew exactly where he wanted to place his cameras. Oh, I love that. Which is very type A energy, which we love to see in a director, honestly. Do physicists work with angles? Just, yeah, I mean, just for general sure. science. That's part of physics. That's part of the physical realm, right? <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm trying to show up as the character, okay? <laughs> uh, the screenplay is by um, Alan Scott, Dwight Taylor, Ben Holmes, Ralph Spence, and Caroly Noti, who's uncredited, apparently. Caroli. Caroli. Caroli, Caroli Noti. Um, Maybe that's like part of the reference from the, the Hungarian version. Maybe, probably. Um, so I will say that Dwight Taylor wrote the original screenplay for this and, um, 
Fred Astaire really didn't like it, to be honest. He felt, he felt, so this, apparently, I've not seen The Gay Divorcee, but apparently this is very similar to The Gay Divorcee. Mm -hmm. That's what every article said. That was like one of the biggest criticisms that critics had at the time of this movie was that it was too close to The Gay Divorcee, which was their film they had made the year before. So it was like fresh on people's minds and they were like, it's the same thing. I did read through the Wikipedia plot of it and it is like mistaken identity in a hotel. So it's it's got similar beats for sure. <laughs> um, Alan Scott is the one who came in and like basically punched up the script. So I don't know this to be fact, but I'm going to say that Alan Scott is the reason that there are so many jokes in this movie. And I loved these jokes. These are like timeless energy jokes. Like these are like set up punchline energy. And I laughed at all of them. So good job, Alan Scott. Uh, thank you for your hard work on this film. Uh, it's produced by Pandro... Pandro S. Berman. It stars Fred Astaire as Jerry and Ginger Rogers as Dale, which Slay. Is that a is that a girl was that was that a girl's name at some point? Not that there's gendered like... names, but like I'm so used to that not being a woman's name that I was like, oh. Um anyway. Uh I thought Molly would have something to say about the name Dale for some reason. Cinematography. <laughs> Anticipating that great zinger on the back of New York. I Dale. thought no, I just thought you were gonna be like, oh well, historically Dale was uh Oh sorry, I forgot I had to know all things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What the po- what was the Molly, what was the point of the PhD if you aren't gonna like know everything? <laughs> um Cinematography is by I ask David. myself that every day. <laughs> Cinematography by David Abel. It is edited by William Hamilton. The music uh, songs are by Irving Berlin and Max Steiner did the score. The production and company is RKO Pictures and it's also distributed by them. Uh, Was RKO merged and acquired or it just died? Thank you for asking because I did look this up because <laughs> I do try to, to know all things. <laughs> no things. <laughs> Adam's in his learning era. I'm in my... <laughs> <laughs> After 20 years of skipping that I really finally. listened to what Melania said when she said be best <laughs> and I really took that to heart. Um <laughs> years later <laughs> Molly was shocked by that joke. Um so Arkeo uh pretty much didn't make it really out of the 40s after the post-war era. They kind of just like fell by the wayside and then they were acquired and then dissolved in the 60s. And then there now technically is an Arkeo it's not RKO Pictures, it's RKO something. Like, somebody just restarted the name so they mm-hmm. could, like, have, like, the touch point of it. Um, but they don't, it's not, like, a big company or it's anything. It's like a yet. crypto business or something? Ba- basically. <laughs> yeah, very, it's very NFTs. Offshore. Yeah. Um, it was released on August 29th, 1935. Uh, that was the premiere in New York City, and then it went wide in September 6th, 1935. And again, what does wide mean in 1935? <laughs> like, we have to take a train to each town and roll out a reel. Like, what's happening? <laughs> The running time is 101 minutes, so get ready, girlies, because we are going to be going longer than the movie today for sure. Um, the budget Unlike was all our other episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different from all our very other. Very different. Yeah. Um, the budget was six hundred nine thousand dollars, which is wow, thirty balling on a budget, which is thirty seven million <laughs> today. I did look up an inflation okay. calculator, and then the box wow. office it made three point two million, and that was a higher number than the other one. I don't remember what that was, <laughs> but like. If you figure out the percentage, you can like do your own mental math. Yeah. Wow. That's, it's pretty impressive. My two and a half year old nephew just this weekend, we were playing with these like building block things and he kept asking me which one was bigger than the other one. So he's like really working on that. And I think it's great, Adam, that you're also kind of engaging in that that sort of, yeah. which number is bigger than the other. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I just learning era. I love it. Learning (laughs) era. (laughs) Um, This is the most successful film of the Astaire Rogers partnership, which I believe was nine or 10 films. Box office performance. It was 10 in total. Yeah. Um, yes, by box office. This was the most successful RKO oh. Pictures film of the 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the second most successful film of 1935. Mm. Um, so it was very well received by the general public. So this film, this film was um, banned in Italy um, <laughs> because of the Italian stereotype of the film. Yeah. And uh, Benito Mussolini personally took offense to it. And so the Italian government banned this film. That's the one you I mean, don't it, want to offend, I guess. It wasn't great. To be honest, yeah. But here's the Mussolini thing: definitely needed to relax in like a lot of ways. <laughs> this should why be. Molly? Why do you say that? <laughs> why did you go into that a little bit more? You you can quote me on that. <laughs> Mussolini needs to relax. <laughs> we're gonna make shirts. That's gonna be we're That's putting our merch. That's our, our first piece Mussolini of merch. Our first relax. merch. Um, 
Yeah. So, um, Fred and Ginger have like a long storied history. There's like stories. There's obviously the famous quote that Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire, but it did, but in but backwards and in heels. Mm-hmm. Do we know what the origin of that quote is? I don't. It was on one of the things I read today, and I didn't. You know. I'm gonna do some live research. Live Keep research. With some facts. We are in our learning era. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, Ginger's shoes were often filled with blood because um, Fred hers. Her blood? Is that, mm-hmm. your, is that your question? Mm-hmm. No, somebody else's. Mm. Um, Fred really liked long, long takes. He really wanted these to be one take dance sequences. Like that was his whole thing. He wanted them to be shot at eye level. So you saw the full body. It was like a wide shot. So you could see all of the movement. Yep. And he wanted it to be one continuous take. So that it really felt like you were there. Like he basically was trying to recreate the feeling you get when you go to a theater. Pretty mm. much. Exactly. And um, that's very hard to do because that means anytime you mess up like 95% of the way through the shot, you have to start all over again. So Ginger, um, I have to assume that high heels in, in the 30s probably weren't as comfortable as they are today. And it's not even like they're that comfortable today, but I can only imagine what they were in the 30s. So she, uh, she had extra pairs of shoes because they would often fill with blood from all of the dancing that she had to do long into the night. Wow. Update on the quotation. Sure. The quote is often misattributed to Rogers herself, but she denies that. And in her 1991 biography, she said that she thought that the actual line was coined by cartoonist Bob Thaves. No idea who that is, but she actually also clarified that she usually practiced in low heels and then changed into higher heels for filming, Mm. um, which resulted in her uh, having to change some dance moves because... (laughs) Turns out that can change things when mm-hmm. you switch to high heels. They, yeah, Dave's. There's a lot of there was a lot of like interesting like Fred and Ginger. There's like a lot of rumors throughout history that they like didn't like each other or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and the what the thing that I read was like mostly it's proved to not be correct. Like they were at least like very like professional with each other and whatever. Like they he would get frustrated with her because he was a perfectionist. It's very similar to Gene Kelly. I don't think he would scream as much as Gene. I think that was like a big Gene thing that he was like, that was his gig. I think a lot of the credit went to Fred a lot of the time because he also choreographed a lot of it. And she mm. really did just like learn the routine to dance. And she did, this is not, this is truly not taking anything away from her. Um, but uh, I think sometimes she felt like he got a little too much attention for that. So she felt that she was something called like the button, the button decider or something like that. The button maker, which was basically like, she always knew what the flourish at the end of like the scene or the moment Mm. or the move should be so that it buttons perfectly. That was always like what she did really well. And she was very proud of it. Um, But she tells the story about how (laughs) during, I don't know if it was this film or maybe it was another film. They're all the same film, by the way. (laughs) Um, But it was one of them where he, they had like, done this done this scene oh it was it was this film because it was during the it was in what is supposed to be venice which is like the second half of this movie um they were on set they were doing this number and the director wanted them to do like just basically ad lib like a a little dance moment for a close-up um and so they didn't fred and ginger both really didn't like doing things without having rehearsed them ahead of time Mm -hmm. but like time was money so they just like figured out something really quick and did it. And then his hat, his top hat almost came his like almost came off and went into the water and he caught it. But he was so mad that it came off that he kicked the set and left a hole in the set because he was so upset about it. And she said she like didn't understand why he was upset until she realized that it was because his hat was hiding that he hadn't put his toupee on yet that day. So he didn't mm-hmm. he was very vain. So I think there was a little bit of like she was a little annoyed by <laughs> the nonsense he would do. Uh, Lucille Ball is in this movie, if you aren't aware. She's in the flower shop scene. Oh, I did not know that. She's the platinum uh, blonde like worker that does not face the camera. Exactly. Oh. You just put a profile. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't even sound like her voice. I mean, it is like 15 to 20 years before like the I Love Lucy. So like she is probably like 19 in this film. Mm-hmm. Like she is so young. Um, but it's very funny. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say was that uh, this film was nominated for Best Picture, Best Art Direction, Best Original Song for Cheek to Cheek, and Best Dance Direction, which apparently used to be a category of the Oscars. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping we spend some time discussing why we should bring that back and potentially who we would nominate. Ooh. Ooh. 
Absolutely. For I this year, that. just in general. We'll get to it. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> um, I'm so excited that you like came in with with um, sequences mapped out. This is this is amazing. You're a great <laughs> guest. Um, can I share my favorite Ginger Rogers fact? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, her mom started the Red Scare in Hollywood. <gasps> I think I shared that on a previous pod, but I feel like you didn't have the context fully of who Ginger Rogers yeah. is, so I'm just resharing it. She, wow. Her mom comes up in a story I have later. Yeah, her mom like went to Joseph McCarthy and was like, I think there are some commies over here. And she oh, like started the whole wow. thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they're both, I mean, both Fred and Ginger are like middle America bred and born. Like I think mm-hmm. Ginger was from Colorado or or Texas, something like that. I think she grew up in Fort Worth or something like that. I don't think she was born there. Um, and then uh, Fred Astaire is famously from Omaha. So mm-hmm. they're both, uh, you know. Also the birthplace of Rita. Also, have we talked about this? That's where my it's mom Nanny. was born. Yes. What? Yes. Oh my God. That's so funny. The Omaha moms. The, the Omaha moms. Omaha moms. Omaha moms. Omaha moms. We're trying. We're all Actually, trying. Actually, <laughs> I should clarify because she'll get mad if I if I say it incorrectly. She actually was born in Philadelphia, but oh. moved to Omaha when she was a toddler, a, a wee a wee bairn. So Mamahas, Mamahas, Mamahas. That's it. There we go. I was um, working on it. Yeah, the entire time. <laughs> my mom was born in. Oh, I didn't mean to make this full screen. My mom was born in Omaha and then moved to Indiana when she was like six, I think. Hmm. Oh, five. they were like they were like switching. Basically. They were ships passing in the night. Ships passing in the night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we can move but, on. But but no ships in Nebraska. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, no ship. What ship is sailing between? Wagons. Wagons. Passing each other at Twilight. That's the other thing you should know about me. It's historical accuracy is important. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay, yeah. all I jokes. care about. Um, so we are now talking about the film. Uh, <laughs> I, we've been just bantering this We've just been bantering time. this whole time. I think we should really get into the episode. <laughs> Oh, we're um, recording. <laughs> so I really, really liked this movie. I really, um, I'll say this later too, but this has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which Mm. I think is a little crazy. Um, There's probably like a little bit of like rose colored lenses on people watching this film. Wait, wait, does that mean from users it's 100%? Because then you say critics did not like it at the time? Critics, but I don't know. I don't know what they're, I don't know if they have all of the critics consensus from, because they only have historical whatever. It must be like people writing more contemporary or no contemporaneously would be at the time of the thing more recently about it sure right yeah yeah sure that's what it seems yeah um but i really i really liked this movie i loved how quick it was i love that there's only five songs in this to be quite <laughs> honest. A movie musical podcast. and i think maybe that is the sweet spot is we don't need 14 songs in a movie maybe we just need five and we're good because i didn't five, feel like i was like yeah. skipped on songs yeah. five really solid numbers yeah, yeah they, they do need have to be to, good they, they have to be penned be... by irving berlin none so. of them, yeah and none of them and are like ballads fred astaire yeah. choreography yes yeah. and i mm-hmm. need to full dance numbers in them yeah mm-hmm. um yeah and i do think like that this is such a stupid thing to say the dance is really good in this <laughs> and i really liked because i once so i like there's like a whole section in the wikipedia article that talks about the specific choreography of this film and like the numbers more specifically and i was so impressed that i like went back after i read it to like rewatch the numbers and i was like wow there is like so much storytelling that's done through the dance mm-hmm. which i think sometimes in modern movie musicals is like we really just want it to be as showy as possible and it's not necessarily mm-hmm. about the story i think this is like the perfect in between of like we know i love we know i love a ballet <laughs> but like a, a second act ballet which like is just to reiterate what has happened in the plot Versus, like, the other side of the coin, which is, like, it, where it's just dance to be, like, it's just to give energy f- from the screen to the audience. Whereas, like, I think this is, like, the perfect halfway point of, like, doing both things very well. I think it, and it, it's that idea of does, does the dance move the plot forward or not? 
or is mm -hmm. it just to showcase which i think obviously this showcases dance beautifully but it does like you said it does move the plot forward and it also demonstrates how their relationship evolves okay. as well from very each, that yep. each one yeah sure. which i think is just funny because i feel like that's a standard that we have when it comes to music and the songs in a musical or a movie mm -hmm. musical that like it was really refreshing to see a movie that was like oh the dancing is doing that work like that it really is the the vehicle and i'm like oh wow art <laughs> and it was crazy because i was watching this yesterday and being like i think i was taking for granted what they're doing because they look it looks effortless like they don't look winded they don't look out of breath yeah. they just look like they're doing this in their sleep and like watching it a second time today i just, again i just watched the numbers i didn't watch like the whole movie but just watching the numbers i was like this is so ridiculously uh physical and mm -hmm. like i would be tired from doing a box step so i can't imagine the like training and like the amount of time you need in order to not just do this but like make it look that good is like the mm -hmm. other half of the equation that's so hard to get for a lot of people oh this was so this was what a great choice molly congrats <laughs> thank you finally i did something right on this podcast well you didn't know the origin of the name dale for women but it's fine <laughs> uh, the standards are... for women uh yeah what did rj what did you think what was your overall thought yeah i agree i i thought the the zippiness of the script how quick it was i think that was the one that surprised me the most was that the jokes were so quick and fast and the dialogue was great and just how how built in the chemistry already was so that way anytime cool. fred and ginger were on screen together it was like I, I was like a fly on the wall like it really felt like i was just watching two very grounded people like these are two real people just like interacting mm -hmm. um and like adam and i <laughs> adam and i kept being bringing up like built-in chemistry obviously and i was like oh they're the emma stone and the ryan gossing of their time obviously and we were <laughs> brandon is so mad brandon's never been more upset <laughs> and and we were like honestly we should like do this more often of like just put people keep putting people keep together. Putting together put yeah. tom hanks and meg ryan in three more rom-coms you together. Are, are we ruining doing? my closer <gasps> oh, okay, okay oh okay, i did okay. see what it was but okay. i have a totally different answer mm. but yeah that was kind of like my big takeaway was that because it was my first time seeing them that it was just like wow it really is effortless in the dancing but also effortless in like their acting because they are just so natural with one another yeah brandon funny you should mention uh la la land because <laughs> Also, something I've never really, I don't, I've never really seen it all the way through. And like you, like I said earlier, this is the first time I've watched it. But I think what, here, stick with Wait, me for a moment. this or La La Land you've never seen all the way through? Uh, neither. Well, this now because of this well, right, because right, right. experience we're having, but I've never seen La La Land. But go with me for a moment. I think what keeps me so, has kept me away from watching movies like La La Land is mm -hmm. it feels like, I mean, clearly they're, they're referential. Clearly they are hearkening back to movies like that. Like it, it's so, it's so obvious. And if it's not, I think I'm just too, I just don't love this idea of people watching it and not knowing what it's really referencing and pulling from it. So I think what keeps me so averse to films like La La Land is I would rather people just watch movies like this, but then it's like, I don't even know the classics myself, but I think I just know like the classics are better. So like I said, um, I know it's a, I know the, it's a constant shame circle that yeah, we live it in. Really yeah. is, it really is. It really is. But I think it's <laughs> like preserve the, preserve the classics, I think is where I am with this. But I mean, uh, Adam, you said it really well, and the dancing is effortless. It is effort. Like, I have so many MVPs just from Ginger herself, and so yeah. I'm deciding if I want to just drop those now because I'm not going to need them all. But uh, it it is just like I'm thinking, you know, like seeing it, like if you were seeing it live, mm -hmm. I don't even think I've seen people perform like this live before, mm -hmm. and yeah. be that great. Like, it is so balletic. And I think yes. that's what's so beautiful about these two together is like now now or in you know the traditional musical or in the more modern mm -hmm. musical the style I, the style of dance is so singular yeah you're getting one type of dance in oklahoma or rogers and hammerstein you're getting one type of dance in something more modern mm -hmm. but this is it is ballroom it is tap dancing mm -hmm. it is soft shoe mm -hmm. it is ball it is truly ballet which is also why i love american in paris but different topic mm -hmm. but it's just beautiful and i think the fact that you get to experience something as if you are watching something on stage 
even though you're watching a movie and the way that they capture it really to me honors truly honors the dance for the dance because it's presented in a way that dance was intended to be um enjoyed so yeah it, it's just beautiful and it's like the you like the the setups and the jokes are you can see a lot of them coming but they're still good it's still yeah. so tight mm -hmm. um and I think it's really just watching a, a movie like this you can see you just see where so many other things come later um in other films and it's it's really beautiful it's so easy yeah this uh, this one goes down really smooth Molly, we have to know, did you like it or not? Do you like this movie? We have to know. Obviously like it. I've seen it multiple times before. I, I will confess, though, because I've seen it many times before, it was a little hard to pay attention to <laughs> yeah. for me. I just, I just kind of, I don't know. I checked out. I had things that were pressing on my mind, and I kept being distracted by thinking about other things. I think that the pacing of movies from the 30s, well... The overall five songs, tight hundred minutes, that's all great. Um, it still has a little bit of that, like, feels like there's a lot of air at the end of your sentences mm -hmm, sort of mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I did want to say that the the idea of like, this is how dance is meant to be sort of like consumed. Mm -hmm. The article I read for this, this app uh, was called Fred Astaire's Site Specific Choreography High Art for the Low Art Consumer by Michelle Burney in Studies in Musical Theater. And I would say that the like overall thesis was like this that Fred Astaire's style was very much capturing dance as like a real thing in real space rather than like as a uh cinematic um like I don't want to say trick that that like uh devalues it, but like instead of embracing like what, how do we use the technique of cinema to show dance? Mm -hmm. It was very like, just use the camera to capture the dance that's happening yeah. Yeah, in yeah. space. Mm -hmm. So um, she cites David Rotel, who um, contrasted it with Busby Berkeley, which I thought was like a really interesting, like here's two ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then Berkeley, um, it was very like, it is showing like movement and it's like it's movement of camera as much as of bodies. Whereas Astaire mm -hmm. was like, it's the movement of the actual body. And then also really interesting, she quotes Paula Morenz Cohen, who wrote about this, that like there was like a hundredth, some sort of a centennial celebration of Hitchcock. I don't know what a hundred years from like his first film or like what the, mm -hmm. what the origin point was, but she was talking about the fact that like Hitchcock is, is like very beloved by cinema, like film theorists, like the academic study mm -hmm. of film, whereas Astaire is not. And she was like, why would that be? And she theorized that it's because um, the technique, the, again, like the camera, the cinema, cinemagraphic technique was all about Hitchcock, which means, um, and I'm going to quote here, an understanding of Hitchcock's technique does not reduce the experience of the film, but deepens it, bringing to consciousness something that one has already registered on some level because Hitchcock intended it to be registered. Technique, in other words, is never at odds with the sensation in Hitchcock. For Astaire, however, the result is different. The invention of film theory adds nothing to the experience of his films. His work is not so much mined by theory as resistant to it. So she's basically saying like film theorists don't like it because like they can't add any of their like, mm. I've identified the thing that Hitchcock yeah, did that yeah, made yeah, you yeah. feel this way. They to don't it. get to there's like no... English teacher the way into like the curtains yeah. are blue because she's sad. Yeah. yeah, There's no benefit to like, I really get film. I really understand techniques and that sort of thing. And so yeah. she that's where the like low art thing comes in is that she says mm. like you can be just a sort of uninformed of a viewer and understand it and on understand the same the level art. as somebody who yeah. really sort of gets film yeah but i also think too going along with that conversation is like there is i think so many people don't understand like the vocabulary of like dance because it is a more specialized art form for a lot of people like especially like classically trained dance but this these this choreography is so filled with like st like what we were talking about earlier where it's like full storytelling that is like when i watched it a second time that's when i like really understood like what the dance was saying because i was like focused in instead of being like this is so nice to look at i was like trying to see figure out what the story they were telling through the dance was and i think for a lot of people <clears throat> they just don't have that like they don't have that base knowledge of like what they're supposed to be understanding from it so mm -hmm. they maybe can feel lost like how some people uh i think like if we if we go on a tangent about like <laughs> greek tragedy on <laughs> on our podcast and people don't know what that is i'm sure it, it's just like lost on people like when we talked about the greek chorus of mamma mia if you don't know what a greek chorus is that reference isn't going to do anything for you mm -hmm. um 
but I, I, I felt like I knew enough to be like, oh, I see like what steps he's using and like what, what they're I doing think, specifically. Yeah, I think also like you're pointing out a really great distinction between like vocabulary of cinema versus vocabulary of dance. So you like, you don't need to understand movies to get what's happening, but you can have a deeper experience by understanding the technique of dance for sure. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's go, let's start at the top. Let's start at the top. Um, Top Hat was uh, came out, and I, I'm just kidding. Um, well, let's get this podcast started. Let's get this podcast started. Let's should I hit record? Go ahead and record that. Should start now. Um, so this movie starts in, in a, a in a quiet club, in a parlor, in a what is this? Where are we? A it's club, a gentleman's, a gentleman's, gentleman's club. club. I think the sign yeah. even says that. But is the joke? Because I always equate gentleman's club with like like men smoking and playing poker and maybe cigarette girls yeah. yeah no this was definitely a thing that existed and oh my god watching this i was like i would absolutely pay money to be a part of this club <laughs> in the modern a place day. where you're just a forced to be quiet people would just be quiet oh my gosh Molly's sounds dream. amazing um i was also i think this film also does a lot of <laughs> the thing of being like the british are so stuffy aren't oh, they yeah. mm-hmm. which oh, like very a lot. honestly very never a tired trope there are two eurocentric tropes in this film which is like italians are stupid <laughs> and the british are stuffy and i hope those wells never run dry <laughs> in cinema <laughs> because they're so funny to me um so we start in this like club blah 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 blah, blah. it's supposed to be very quiet it really nothing happens in the scene um but it's just a fun I bit. yeah yeah I, but i think it's also where we establish his He's, character yeah. yes. the answer, which might be obvious but i think that like it it is how he like attracts attention but it's also how he i i think there's something to that like that's how he's introduced as, as like yeah. a as a, as a meddler as a disruptor but mm-hmm. also i because again it's my first fred fred astaire movie this movie starts with him doing like a silent physical bit of comedy. Like this is like yeah. very classic vaudeville mm-hmm. slapstick, like a comedy bit. And I always knew that these movies are like ostensibly comedies, but I was like, well, they're comedies in the way that like Musical Shakespearean time. comedies are like comedies because people don't die at the end. Like I was like, oh, they're romances. They're not like comedies, but like mm-hmm. this is funny. Has jokes. Shakespeare has Shakespeare has she knows bars. How to tell she has yeah. bars. <laughs> she wouldn't be. She wouldn't go home at the roast challenge, but she would be like safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare. I think it's sad that you like didn't. I I definitely think of Fred Astaire as like a comedian. I Obviously, think, not as much as a dancer, but like for sure that the, like physical think, yeah. comedy. Comedian the, first. I mean, I <laughs> guess first. first dancers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me, yeah. I I think in the cultural consciousness, at least, I can't speak for either of these two. But I, because it's always like dance first, you just start to feel like, oh, because I don't think like, I I think Gene Kelly's the same in a way where it's not like, oh, he's like such a great, he's, it's always like, they're good, they're great dancers. Yeah. So I feel like I go in being like, and then they're going to be like a fine singer. They're well, going to be like a fine actor. It's all timing, right? Mm. It is. Great yeah. dancing and great comedy are both all on time. It's a dance. It's a tap <sighs> dance. Life's a dance. It's rhythm. <laughs> And that's the pod. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's, it's rhythm. I thought there was going to be a, I've got rhythm. Um, I got but, rhythm. But it's okay. I got music. Thank you. Now, now I got is. my man who can ask for anything more. That one okay. is not in this movie. Yeah. That's not in this movie. No. I don't know if that's Berlin. Is that Porter? Gershwin. Yeah, is that a... Oh, it's Gershwin. Uh, it's Gershwin. Gershwin. Yeah. Um, the Gershwins. Uh, so then we move to the hotel, which is, this is the first location of this film, truly. And... The first hotel, yes. Yeah, the first, first hotel. hotel. Of the two hotels, this is the first hotel. <laughs> and it's fully the same set it's with the different same. decals yeah. on the doors. Yes. There's yeah. no I difference love... between England and Italy. We all know this. Yeah. It's all just general Europe. Yeah. Um. So we're in this hotel, and he does a number, because we find out that he's like a dancer. He's an American dancer who's been hired by, what was his name, Horace? Horace Hardwick. Horace Hardwick. Horace Hardwick to like have a show in London, whatever. And... The, uh, this is the classic 1930s, from what I understand, because again, I don't watch these movies. I've never seen them. <laughs> but this is the classic thing that they do where it's like, the, you just start going into, you just go into a song because it's like, and now it's song is supposed to happen. There's not mm-hmm. like an actual, it's not the like modern understanding of being like, my feelings are so big that I can't express them with words. I must move to song, which is like the very uh, 20, 2010 understanding of like what musical theater is. Um, 
So he just starts singing the song and then he does this great tap dance. The song is called No Strings, I'm Fancy Free. I'm going to play a little bit of the song and then we can talk about it. No ties to my affections, I'm fancy free. I'm free for anything you can. No dates that can't be broken. No words that can't be spoken. Especially when I am feeling romancy. Like Robin on a tree, like Sailor goes to sea, like an unwritten melody, I'm free, that's me. So bring on the big attraction, my decks are cleared for action, I'm fancy free, free for anything fancy. No strings, no connections, no ties to It's a great song, it's a fun little ditty, he is stomping on this floor. This man is... he's huffing. Uh, you you could, you could. if you, you could. knew the terms, yeah. Which is the the ironic part of them going horse horse whatever tomorrow is because those are also hooves. Um, but uh, <laughs> I do like this. Uh, I really liked the bit. So he's hoofing. They're above a, They're above another unit. When this happened, I literally thought was. My thought was like, I hope this is the plot. I hope it's just this where she is annoyed <laughs> by a lot. La- by a loud hotel guest and then it's just hijinks in the hotel which i actually kind of is, love but... that yeah <laughs> but I love, like... and it should be like a, i'll take place over one night it's just like <laughs> yes. all about him and her, she tries like... to sleep and they fall, fall in love and absolutely. her just going up and downstairs yeah absolutely it's I was noises like, off yeah yes i was like this is a farce right because i'm ready i'm ready it's the bit of her of her, the reveal of ginger first of all in this Full Gorgesa. satin bed with satin, like gorgeous Trina. Full beat. Full beat. Full beat. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> she looks incredible. I want to lay in this bed so bad. I cannot leave this earth without owning glow. one of these mm-hmm. one of these dressing gowns yes, one day. That that They're vignette silk. they would put over the camera, the camera, the filter for the like soft lens. Oh god, it's so good. So she's Season annoyed, <laughs> and I, I in the past week. Are you going to do this? Yes, I'm going to do this right now. On the pod? Okay. I, in the past week, have gotten into something called BL. BL stands for boys love. And it's like an uh, like an Asian TV show thing where it's like... Genre. It's a genre. It's a genre. <laughs> um, and it's just like two guys in a rom-com, basically. And it'll be one season and whatever. I have watched, in a week, I've watched seven of these. <laughs> seven TV shows. Fully in a week. So it's seven it's episodes like, or nope, like seven seven scenes. series in a week, and it's a it's a gay rom com, uh, like it's TV like a heart series. Stopper. That's what the it's genre like heart is. Stopper, but everybody's Asian and doesn't speak English. <laughs> oh, I I wasn't familiar with the country of Korea. Yes, thank you so much for that. So, so it's a genre, but like of TV shows. And it's yes. called Boy Love because it's because it's just gay Cause men. Because it's just gay men. Them. Okay, gotcha. Um, and it doesn't necessarily. They might not be. They might not be rom coms. Like I, we watched one last night that was about vampires, and they did not end up together. <laughs> so I have it's a to genre. Tell you. It's a genre only that's united called, by the fact that it's gay leads. That's it's called gay love. It's gay love. Yes, and it's very good, and it's very fun, and I'm having a great time. However, my <laughs> favorite back, trope. Bring it my, back. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. My trope that I realized that I really like in watching seven of these in a week. My favorite trope yeah. is enemies to lovers. Which is not new. It's not a BL thing. It's a romance Watch thing. Watch the mm-hmm. second season of Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so busy. Um, but Jonathan Bailey's BL. gay. Yeah, when, Jonathan Bailey's gay. When support I, gay. Exactly. The artist. When I realized <laughs> that we are getting enemies to lovers in this movie, I was, I've never been more on board with anything in my life. <laughs> He I looked, was thrilled. He RJ could attest. He looked at me as if he had like just made another re- revelation, just like the same revelation when the opera singer wasn't singing opera in The Greatest Showman. It's the exact it same the revelation. Exact same. But Adam looking at me, go, it's enemies to lovers. I don't know what that experience is like because I haven't seen it. Oh. Anyways, oh. oh, well, we've spoiled the surprise. <laughs> yeah, she I'm doesn't sorry. sing. Opera. She doesn't sing opera. That's good. Um, you. <laughs> so I was thrilled. I was thrilled to find this out, and uh, I think this movie does it very well um but the fact when she comes up and like yells at him and then they have this like little uh back and forth this little repartee um and she just gets all these like zingers in Mm -hmm. these like last she gets like the last word in which is always so satisfying Mm -hmm. and she delivers them so well again like this is the same thing i had with fred where i was like oh ginger's like a great she's like a great female dancer and especially for like that time i feel like 
it was so about like being pretty and not being funny, which is weird because like I think a lot of these people were so multi talented that obviously they were doing everything just to like be in the industry. But I just wasn't expecting it. So when I like knew that she could also match the comedy, I was like, I am in for a treat tonight. This is going swimmingly. That was my experience. <laughs> I love this meet cute. It's so good. It's so good. It's all it's Okay, what's better? You Brandon, you can't answer this. What's better, this meet cute or La La Land? And the, the like, whole movie of La La Land, or no, just no, no, this? no, no, oh, just the meet Jeremy, just movie? comparing meet cutes. And I don't mean the one where they're on the where they're in the cars, the but I mean the piano slash. What I really mean is the where they're at the party, and the she party. makes them sing the, she makes them play the. Oh, this 80s for song. sure. Yeah, I think it's this too. I love. Because yeah, go ahead. It's just the right amount of they start out kind of antagonizing each other, but then. Mm-hmm. So like she's mad that he's making noise, but then he gets out sand and decides mm-hmm. to like do a soft tap dance to like oh. soothe her to sleep and she does fall asleep. And the fact that there's like there's room for it to end on just like being sweet and caring. I feel like we yeah. don't get that a lot in rom com. Like it feels like it's often like it's just the enemies, 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 enemies until it breaks at the end. And this, I feel like movie makes so much space for them to just be sweet to each other yeah. in mm-hmm. between the bickering. And I love that. When I tell you that this movie delivers two things that Adam loves, enemies to lovers trope and uh, soundscapes to fall asleep mm. to, he literally was like, I, this, is the, this is the world I want to live in. <laughs> white noise. White noise? Me? White noise to fall asleep to? Fall asleep to? I mean, sometimes sometimes we just run the dryer just to run the dryer <laughs> while we sleep. It's nice. And apparently it's not his own it's not his only dance with sand. <gasps> oh wait, really? Yeah, and I only know this because of Wikipedia. But uh in there's you know, there just is a as page, much as Adam. <laughs> great. There is a there is a page just about like a catalog of his dances, of his numbers, of his routines, whatever you want to call it. And there's categories, and one of them is solo sand dances, and there's two listed. This one is wow. um, something from the Belle of New York in 1952, which is hmm. much, much later, later than the after he ginger allegedly era. retired, and then didn't he did this multiple times, apparently mm-hmm. in his career, where he was like, "I'm done." And, then he came. and you know, you know, I'm pretty. I think I think this is right. What pulled him out of retirement? Gene Kelly breaking his ankle. Correct. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that today. So you know, had, and what so movie was a- it for? Easter Brandon. Parade. Easter Parade. Very good. Uh, Starring who is Judy Garland, <laughs> which has a reference to the feather situation of this film. Did you see that? I think we need to. I think we need to we're gonna that later. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna just keep that feather keep in your that cap. Feather in your well, cap. Put that feather in your pin and your feather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put a feather on that. <laughs> um. So then we move on to the next day, and he's definitely like smitten or whatever. He sends up. This is where the. This is where the. The this misunderstanding. Is where the misunderstanding begins. He sends up the entire store of flowers <laughs> to her room. First of all, we don't know what this woman does. We never know. She's we just do. a woman. She we is do? the original influencer. She is the original is. influencer. <laughs> Bellini <laughs> employs her to He's wear his designs in and high then, society so that when people task. ask her what she's wearing, she can say that it was designed by Bellini. Bellini. So she is it's employed. A yeah. She's employed as a as an influencer for Bellini. She's an influencer. Wow, I didn't. I that. Yeah, it, yeah that is what it is. That's Let's so go back to that model. That's a revelation. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back to that model, but like take it like, but fully do the go to parties, go to events. An- analog influencer. That's yes, the next yes, thing. Not yeah. Digital. Yeah. Not I'm an influencer and I don't have an Instagram. I I am yes. not on social media. I am an influencer and in I just crash bar mitzvahs. Yeah. Parties. Right, right, right. I go just on go Facebook things. events and then just see what's nearby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> busy season right now on the it's holidays. It's busy so. season right now. A lot of office parties. A lot. Why are we recording on a Monday? Absolutely. So oh, yeah, I'll we all have so influencer busy. obligations on the weekends. We have, we're so booked. I visit different WeWorks around the city and mm-hmm. I just walk through them in my gowns. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Gowns. Beautiful gowns. <sighs> um, so he sends up all these flowers to her room and he bills them back to Horace. So this is where the confusion shall start to begin. Where people think he is horse. Um, and then uh, she comes down in this equestrian need... number. She's She looks like she's about to be the the guest relations uh, pers- VIP tour guide who's leading Walt around explaining what Disneyland's going to look like. 
That's a very specific niche reference. That's a you very know, niche just reference. Just anything about just Disneyland. for Brandon. Just for Brandon. Um, it's just On like an half e- of the household. It's just <laughs> an, it's just an equestrian moment, and she looks great. Molly, were you ever a, 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 an equestrian or? Oh, I wanted to know. Were you a horse girl? I don't Adam think you. You this, don't. I don't think so. Adam but I genuinely had this question. I wanted yesterday. to know. Yeah, I, like, I would not have ever called myself a horse girl. I did take horseback riding lessons for a while um, okay. when I was a kid. I very distinctly remember as well the day that I was walking home from school and I said something to my sister about not really enjoying horseback riding lessons mm-hmm. and her saying, you could just tell mom and dad that you could stop going. And it had yeah. never occurred to me that that was an option. I didn't dislike it. It just was like, like it was a long drive. Do you know what I mean? Like it just sort yeah, of yeah, wasn't yeah. worth it. Um, mm-hmm. So I did, oh my God, how I did some light horse girling, but I was never okay. deep in the culture at yeah, all. You maybe, I should have, you... maybe I should have said that about dance lessons. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just stop going. <laughs> Uh, you weren't you weren't full black beauty on your on your folder, Lisa Frank. No, yeah, no. I was not like thinking about horses all day, like that sort of. Every, no. every day, your hair was in a ponytail. Yeah, you you weren't like wild hearts can't be broken, <laughs> can't be uh, tamed, can't be tamed, can't be tamed. <laughs> Is that the one where she goes blind? It's the horse okay. tiger. I yeah, I've definitely seen that movie before, but <laughs> it's not that wild was hearts not can't be movie. tamed. Is that the title? I don't know. I don't know. Is that the title right, of the movie? I just will take any opportunity to drop that reference when everyone ha- we all have to stop and look at stuff. Hold on. It can't be broken. Come on. <sighs> yeah, it can't be broken. Don't come for my VHS knowledge. <laughs> um. So anyway, so he figures out that she's going. She's supposed to be. Yeah, she goes horseback riding, right? Yes. 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 So they go That's to the where stables. She's... That's where she's has to take a horse to ride a horse, and well. she needs to take a taxi. I love also the reference. He asked her if she's going to take a carriage and she says something about like the people at the stables think horses are coming back. And, and then he gets this little quip of like, where did they go? Which is funny, but also thinking about the fact that in 1935, it like truly was a like technology that was just on its way out. Mm-hmm. It's like so wild. Yeah. Well then, then, so then the people on IMDb trivia do this thing where they'll put like anachronisms just to be like, look, this movie's not completely historically accurate. And it's like, yeah, it's shot in Hollywood. <laughs> we all know how Brandon feels about this. Um, we he's know. the number one contributor she's, to he's this. He's the one writing. Yes. Yeah, he's the one writing. Um, what was the appara- username? Give me the username. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently in 1935, if you, if we're to assume that this is the same year that this film is taking place, uh, that there were three um like horse drawn cabs still left in london at the time mm. only three and she's licensed. taking them three and she this girl's rich she's rich excuse me what she's, do you think the horses have you were heard? named my name my name what, is Bella Hadid. what were those three horses <laughs> what named? were the three horses is this something yeah. you know or you just you just want no. us to okay um, um each of you give each of you need to give one 1935 the last three horses in london what are they named midge <laughs> oh uh, lux tail <laughs> wild and free <laughs> all right that didn't work my, I'll, okay. I'll stop i'll stop my, my we'll horse we'll my, my horse names are just from the tracks you know from the racetrack sabrina <laughs> are they girls or are they boys okay it doesn't matter anyway we, so, dale <laughs> what'd you say it's dale, dale and dale dale and dale. dale chip and dale. dale dale and bill dale delta work <laughs> yeah stupid <laughs> So they get to the stables, whatever. He, she realizes that it's him halfway through the carriage ride, um, which is a very, again, a very funny little bit that they have. Hilarious. She goes funny. horseback riding, but then it ends up raining. So he goes to like pick her up. First of all, where did he, did he just like steal this cab? <laughs> I do think, yeah. I love the beat cute, but this is the one moment that I was like, this is crazy behavior. This is like crazy. this should not. But he be. also has to take the whole like outfit too. Like yeah, he, yeah. Oh, like the the coat. Yeah. He's the wearing like thing. full Phantom of the Opera cloak. Like he's <laughs> like a yes. cloak exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um. So he headless, it, wait, wait, full headless horseman. <laughs> I'm trying to remember now what he's wearing in the dance number that comes next. It's like, not, do you think it's just the cloak it's a suit. over? A, it's a suit. So he was suit. probably just putting the cloak on over a, an mm-hmm. existing suit. It's so probably, all he needed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he was in a hotel. It was a cloak and a top hat. He saw the cab. He said, "Hey, yeah, yeah." He you lifted got, it from the cab driver's like uh, yeah. hook, and we're like, "Hey, there's an emergency. You gotta go." Oh, I was oh thinking, you, you're. Are we thinking? Yeah, was it? Did he interact? I'm, with the driver I'm thinking he just... duped the cab driver. I think there, there's a cab driver tied up somewhere in oh, that hotel. Full Tom and Jerry. Here's the thing. Exactly. Yeah. This is fully what happens in Phantom of the Opera, by the way, in the film. If you recall, 
she goes to visit her father's grave and you realize that the phantom has has like beaten up the driver so he's the one who takes her out there if you recall the classic 2006 seminal I mean, film I and it, that's like, why it does happen but like saying it it's fully what happens kind of implies it's, it's like the whole plot of it yeah, yeah. it's and not see, really a central and theme. that's why brandon won't watch that phantom of the opera movie because he people won't know that original cultural reference of that mm -hmm. scene is top hat mm -hmm. yeah you know? it's insulting it's insulting we have to care about the classics <laughs> i've seen that one i love <laughs> i mean you're awesome come on i mean you're awesome amazing i, mean, like I love a, that movie that's, a, that's an era right what were you, you said 2006 i think it's that's 2005 like a, actually and that was like a movie music well that's i mean I, I won't take your expertise away from you you know that you know what um, a movie is. <laughs> I just, I love the idea that the cab driver is tied up somewhere because the whole movie Absolutely. is about Horace trying to avoid whatever scandal might be caused by yes. the fact that Ginger Rogers slaps Fred Astaire in the hotel lobby and then they like return the to England scandal. to find out that there's like a much bigger problem that's yeah. developed. So he goes to pick her up and she's in this gazebo, like supposedly waiting out the rain. Famously, it rains a lot in England, so she might be waiting there a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he comes over and like they do this little like very again meet cute energy where he's explaining how thunder works mm -hmm. again referenced in the sound of music <laughs> oh, so many references to this film um and then they do my favorite song which is a reference to la la land which is a re it's referencing la la land in the future um the song is called isn't this a lovely day parentheses to be in caught the rain, in the rain. That's, that's too obvious yeah it's too on the nose <laughs> This is caught in the rain. They're not singing. This a lovely day to be caught in the rain. You were going on your way. Now you've got to remain. Just as you were going, leaving me all at sea. The clouds broke. They broke and oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in a storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain pitter patter, but it really doesn't matter if the skies are gray. As long as I can be with you, it's a lovely day. This number is amazing. Oh yeah. Give me give me like coy, should I dance? Should I join you? Here, I'll do a little tap. I'll just give you that. Try to walk away. In, get in a stopped. gazebo specifically. In a gazebo specifically. Music, again. Um <laughs> here's the thing. So I this is one of the ones I rewatched today. So when I watched this yesterday, I was so struck by the fact that this movie puts Ginger Rogers in the first number that she dances with him in a in like a pantsuit. Yeah, that I was pants. like pants on the runway, pants, pants on the on runway, the gazebo? Pants, pants on the, on the gazebo? gazebo. That I was like tickled by that. I was yeah. like, oh, this is so fun. Like I was not prepared for this movie to put her in like any pant ever. Period. Because at any point in this film, yeah. So the fact that it starts there is great. But I have this to say about this. This is from... The Dancing movie. pant to pant. Dancing pant to pant. Asir sings to Rogers' back, but the audience can see that Rogers' attitude towards him softens during the song, and the purpose of the ensuing dance is for her to communicate this change to her partner. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying the story of the choreography is so good, especially in this song. The dance is one of flirtation, and according to Muller, deploys two choreog choreographic devices common to the classical minuet. Sequential imitation. One dancer performs a step, and the other responds and touching. Initially, the imitation is mocking in character. So she does this at first. I rewatched this today. Yes, yes, He yes, does yes. like a bit, and then she's like kind of making fun of him. She puts her hand in the pocket the same way he has it. It's very like, you're so full of yourself, like blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. It's that energy for sure. Then becomes more of a casual exchange and ends in a spirit of true cooperation. Until the last 30 seconds of this two and a half minute dance, the pair appear to pull back from touching. They never touch. They like have their hands toward each other, but they never actually touch until like the very end of the dance. Um... And then with a crook of her elbow, Rogers invites a stare in. The routine, at once comic and romantic, incorporates hopping steps, tap spins with barrages, loping and dragging steps among its many innovative devices. The spirit of equality which pervades the dance is reflected in the masculinity of Rogers' clothes and in the friendly handshake they exchange at the end. 
it's enemies to friends to lovers. It's enemies to friends to lovers. Yeah. Um, I loved this number. I, I think almost, I think every song is great in this and like all their dances are great. But this was the one that I was like, oh, it's so, I, it was the one where I was like, oh, I really get it. Like people, it's not even like, cause like Cheek to Cheek is their other big one in this, in this movie. And that's beautiful and it's elegant and it's like what I think people wanted in 1935. And we can talk about that more specifically later. But this is, I think, why they had the staying power is like there you just want to live in this world that they are in because it's so they're having so much fun. And again, like if it feels effortless, they I just I was so I loved this so much. I have truly no bad things to say about this movie, unfortunately. I think I think cheek to cheek is like the bringing together of all the production elements is the most impressive mm-hmm. as like a, a a a moment of cinema is the best mm-hmm. but this is the best dance mm-hmm. like i appreciate it the yeah. most for just mm-hmm. what the two of them are doing mhm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. for sure um and then uh i read this thing too where we were talking about how like a stare fred would provide his own clothes and like pick his outfits for the movies um and I think because they were all like pretty, pretty, they were all all contemporary pieces. So it's never like he had to like go into like a period piece wardrobe mm-hmm. or anything. So he just, he just pulled stuff from his mm-hmm. own life, I guess. And this, uh, this outfit he wears in this one, which is like a, a tweed suit um, and like a, a chunky tie, like a chunky tie and like spats and everything. An as- is it an ascot? I don't no, think it was an ascot. I think it's, I think it's a regular a tie, tie. A uh, tie. neck tie. And um, it was talking about how, like, this was, like, he was such a uh, point of fixture for the American consciousness of what men's fashion Mm. could be for America because he specifically wasn't choosing Eurocentric Mm. men's fashion, which was still a little bit more hoity-toity. Like, this is a little bit... It almost matches the dance where it's, like, effortlessly like elegant like it's like there's something so casual about this look but it's still so pulled together and like smart casual smart casual <laughs> business casual snappy casual snappy cash um yeah which i really i liked knowing that little bit about his uh interest in costumes because we'll talk about ginger's interest in costumes later um rj did you like this song yeah great it was funny when he was explaining what thunder was adam was like that's not how thunder works and then he got to the end and was like he explained thunder <laughs> he did in a in a roundabout way that is how thunder works yeah the way the way that brandon is a stickler for historical accuracy adam's I, really into science scientific like, method absolutely it's got actually a... we did both go on a rant about scientific accuracy did... in the last spot so it's not wrong I Wait, did we? The, 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 yeah. the square square root of possible oh god yeah <laughs> we did that's true Sorry, Brandon. Then we got you off. It's good. It's over. It's fine. <laughs> just gonna just gonna make a joke about uh, what classes Adam was paying attention to in college. Oh, anatomy. That, is... that was that was the problem. Was yes, that anatomy, the problem. where you study weather, anatomy. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. anatomy. Mm-hmm. It was really he he got a theater degree, but the only classes he liked going to were science, and he just like would not admit to <laughs> so himself. So weird. It was so, so what weird. he wanted to do really was science, and can he we say the he true irony? Can we say the true irony of the situation is that science is the only class I've ever failed in my life. And that's why I had to take that summer class after I graduated to make sure I got my degree. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. No, it's, I, I don't mind talking about it. It's, I, didn't, I, mean, I didn't mean to like bring up a source subject. No, no, no. It's not a source subject at all. I'm, I'm, I, I genuinely am not very good at science. I don't think I'm like super observant in that way that a lot of the sciences like want you to be. Um, I was very good at chemistry in high school though, but that's more math based. So I think that's why mm. I was like, mm. it's all th- and, like theoretical chemistry, not like actually like putting shit together. What was everyone's favorite science topic? <laughs> Let's go around. M- RJ? I did like, I did like the weather and climatology, weather and climatology. class that we took in college. Mm. It was very nice. I, I took like two environmental sciences classes, one in high school, which I, that's way too, I, I'm sorry. I was not mature enough to learn about it. I didn't learn anything. I like it was mumbo jumbo to me. I couldn't understand it because it was a lot more. It was a lot more. Maybe I just had a bad teacher because he was very ranty. I'm like, what is this? Oh, I had a biology teacher who was like a full like now. I don't know if he's still alive, but I'm. I know he's QAnon. 
I don't know it, but like I know that this I man is QAnon. Right. But yeah, I really I like that. He's in QAnon. He is QAnon. He, he is. is he's Q. Q. He's Q. He's Q. I know this. Yeah. I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact. But yeah, I really like Feather and Climatology. Molly, Mitochondria, Powerhouse of the Cell. What do you think I about it? I also like Chemistry. Mm. Yeah. I can knock it down with Bio. Bio is no. all memorization. No. Not into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. I probably did the best in Bio, bio. though, even though I <sighs> was like, really? fine. Yeah. Which one was dissecting the. the biology that was yeah, biology, biology right with the little, mm-hmm. little fraggy in our mm-hmm. in our school it was biology too yeah. mm-hmm. uh brandon, brandon favorite science brandon, f- favorite science favorite are we talking high school or college any uh, oh both. girl we did not take high school well, science uh, i mean college science <laughs> we well, did not take I, mean, I uh the reason i ask well, i think i would say physics because it was to me that was more math based and so i think mm-hmm. that's what i preferred mm-hmm. in high school and then i just I asked because I think in college I, I took a, a we had to take two two yeah. mm-hmm. of the same discipline. <laughs> I'm trying, uh, and I, I took this class called physical science, which was explicitly for non majors, mm. um, and mm. it was like it was a little bit of everything. It was mm-hmm. a, it was a tasting menu, like I a theater a- for non majors class where it's like mm-hmm. we're seeing a play and you just write down what what did you like, what, what, what did you think about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you I think t- about that that experiment? Just on I took a class in college. <laughs> it was a math class. I counted because we had to take two, one or two. I think it was one math class, um, or maybe it was two. I don't remember. I think it was one. We had to take a math class, and I took. I don't remember what it was called, but it might as well have been called numbers exclamation yeah. point because the class was so clearly like we know you don't like math. But so, this is how like numbers are used in the real world. Yeah. So my oh, final yeah. project that applied I got applied mathematics. Applied yeah, mathematics. Like that, yeah. My my final this project so in this class that I got a one hundred percent on. First of all, nobody should be getting one hundred percent. That's insane. <laughs> For what? I got a one hundred percent on a project, and it was literally use math in any way and <laughs> and and give a presentation to the class. So and I so was... you counted up the number of BL seasons and multiplied. <laughs> oh, it's and worse. Total. That's it's, it. worse. it's worse. I was planning a trip to Disney World, so I just ru- I just booked put it, it in a put, it, put it in a Prezi. No, I oh, put it in a Prezi. Oh, so we she did, made a Prezi. We, we did the zooms. Day. Prezi, famously, mm-hmm. what you would use before Canva. Ah, yes. Yes. Canvas uh, herstory. Learn your herstory. Learn Canvas the classics. Know your Canva, classic. Canva know video your classic. is great though. Hold on, hold on. That's the, that's the title. Yeah, know your classics. I'm about to blow your mind with some Prezi in a second. Keep keep talking. I think, I think there's nothing more like 30s than you know, age, not the era of this oh, film. Anyway, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're about good. to be 30s again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing more, more 1930s than Prezi. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> Nothing, nothing brings <laughs> out my understanding of the depression in a better way than a zooming Prezi. in. Yeah. Prezi. Molly, are you posting something? You're, are I you see showing it, I see us? Would you like us to share? <gasps> wow. Would you like us to share? That's Prezi. That's, That's Prezi. Wait, Prezi still exists? This is genuinely Prezi. I'm not. That's joking. history, right there. So Prezi Hold is on. now like Zoom, Zoom filters, Zoom skins, <laughs> Zoom skins. Wow. Did you see? wow. No, sorry. Yeah. No, you were right the I first time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, oh, she was oh, the pointing logo. at the Prezi, yeah, yeah. not at the dancing <laughs> green No, I giant. thought you saw that. Gumby. Do you see him? Can you guys see him? <laughs> I just want to make sure. Do you guys, are you seeing this? Can you guys? This is great for this this yeah. auditory medium. So good. There's a Gumby dancing in front of Molly's face. He's twerking not, in her face. Be... I don't know that it's a Gumby. Oh, oh that was cute. That's, little pie. There you go, 1930s. That's, that's Fred Astaire, girl. That's Fred. <laughs> That's cheek to cheek. And that's Fred. <laughs> and that's on what, Fred? <laughs> Stupid. Where is it? Look, he is. He is doing he's a time ho- step. He's hoofing it. Was... <laughs> oh, do you think that's Fred or is that Gene? That's. Um, I think the top hat would say <gasps> a little more. Oh wow. oh wow! Which one is that? Do we I know? know? I just put in Fred Astaire. Oh, to the that's side. their first movie. That's their first film. Oh, that's the first one. What's the first film that they uh, made? Right. Rio, something about Rio. Yeah, flying down to Rio. There it is, doing the yeah. the, the carioca. I think that's the name of the number. Which, mm. if we really want to, you know, draw some dots, but you know, Disney characters. This is anyway. yeah, yeah like This is there's there he is. Are we just gonna do this? This is the next, this this is the next, this is the next number. number so. This is the next number. So we're getting right. to it. So to our listeners, we Molly is now <laughs> Molly had a dancing gif of Fred Astaire doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're not gonna gif it, but white that's fine. white tails. Can't 
Hard eyes can't lose. What is it called? Big top, big hat, white, top white tails. hat, white tails. tails. Can't lose. Can't. <laughs> white tie Excellent. and tails. Excellent, RJ. Excellent, right there. Big top, white tails can't lose. Big yeah. top. Big top, top hat. <laughs> Big white top. Okay, so anyway, um, save it for the chat. Save it for the <laughs> save it for the other pod. Save it for the stream. Yeah. And so then we stream on. chat. Paywall. Do you we have need to, to edit this one, Anna? I know. <laughs> Truly we... edit. Do we, we need timestamps to... over there? No, it'll be fine. No. Do we need to discuss the 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 like plot? <laughs> do we need? Yeah. Do we have to talk about each layer of the miscommunication and how things are misunderstood? I don't think so. I mean, it's your general hijinks. Of... It's a yeah, it's a slapstick. But I think like the it's... screwball comedy is what yeah. they call them. But it's fun because when I did watch this, it was I did get frustrated at times, and I think it gets it's akin to more of like because of the pacing in an old time movie, like an old thirties movie, that I was like, I just you are clearly in the same room. Just go look outside the door and then you will see that Madge's husband is that man and not the man you think. You you do, you, know, you like, have yeah. to go into it being like, okay, it's going to be crazy the level that people don't just ask each other a sing single question yes. in the order to clarify. Yeah. Absolutely. So you have to just choose to not yeah. challenge that. And that's what makes Madge the MVP. But oh, don't steal my MVP. The Madge VP. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I will so say- just making all the jokes. Because of the screwball comedy of it, we are getting a lot of really fun characters that you. That everyone kind of, in this is so fun, and it's a big personality. Obviously, everyone it's is a small person. cast, so you get a good amount of them too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so the the one thing I I had to rewind to understand because I missed it was the way she mistakes who. Jeff, what is it? Jerry, Jerry for is Hor Horace. For Horace, because it is, happens so is, fast and so quietly. Is, she asks who Horace is. He's pointed out to her on the landing of the hotel. He goes behind a <laughs> chandelier <laughs> and then swaps places basically with Jerry. So then when they emerge on the other side, it's now Jerry, but she's just been told it's Horace, so she thinks he's Horace. We had yeah. to rewind I didn't it. understand it the first time. It's all just going behind the revolving bookcase. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because um, the hotel clerk tells her that Horace has a has a briefcase and Horace yes, hands his briefcase. The man with the briefcase. Hands his stuff off. Yep. Yeah. So he comes on the stairs. She slaps him. They ha and then she gets into an elevator that's clearly just Which, a room. First of all, th these elevators. Oh Mama. yeah. These we we gotta design doors for elevators again. Come on. The yeah, French doors. <laughs> I wish every elevator was a French door. I'm not kidding by that. These by the way, cardboard, cardboard cranes, doors. flamingos, a uh, some bird, some bird. Immaculate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then there's been like a, the the slap happens, so now there's like the slap NBC special, absolutely. The there's an investigation the in this hotel there because a woman an... slapped a man. There are multiple yeah. investigations in this movie, but there they had is, to call in. Yeah, there's multiple authorities. The hotel this film. detective questions both parties involved. It's yeah. it's a big deal. It's yeah. huge. It's huge. Um, so. They they figure out basically you as the audience member realize that she thinks she's mis she's confused about who's who, and so because she knows that her best friend Matt Madge, who she's never met the husband of apparently even though they're best friends, she thinks her husband's been hitting on her. So now she's like, oh, and I liked him, and now he's like, well, she quote said we like even made love or something like that. Yeah, she said, yeah, we, but I She's, think... She yeah. says he made love to her, but I think that we're supposed to understand that in the way that that used to mean, he like, flirting. said sweet things to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I they don't, did a full she... dance routine at a gazebo. Yeah, yeah. At, made love. It's funny because we don't know stable. today that made love actually means you did a tap number together. That's the yeah. origin, Just original the, the etymology. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's very intimate. It's so Absolutely. intimate. Um, so then we, moving on, so he's performing at his performance... He's performing his at performance the at the West End, uh, apparently. He performs a song called Top Hat, White Tie, and Tails. Can't lose. And uh, it's one of, if not the most famous Fred Astaire solo dance number. Oh. It's so good. This is the, this, okay. This is the girl. It's Fred. This. <laughs> it's Fred. This is the true this American is... in Paris 
because there's like an Eiffel Tower in the background. Oh, <laughs> there is. Funny. Um, so uh, a little bit about this number. Um, apparently, Fred was very good. Period. At- <laughs> He's very good at dance. dancing. So let's Apparently. listen to Apparently. end of show, end of pod. <laughs> um, Apparently, he's very good at uh, dance. Specifically, his fluidity of changing tempos of the dance during the like during a dance phrase. So he could go from mm. like doing a huge movement to nothing within like the matter of like on, on the stop of a dime. I'm mixing metaphors. I apologize. And he does it many times during this number. Um, it's very good. It's his first time on screen he's ever used a cane, which becomes like <clears throat> an iconic Fred Astaire thing in later films. Um, and uh, it's very fun to watch. I don't really have much to say about this because it is less of a performance based on story and more of just like he's doing a number for the show that he does a number for. Um, the but thing it's good. I did not like was when was... the cane becomes a machine gun. Oh, oh you didn't find yeah, that fun? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was interesting <clears throat> that in 2022. I didn't love it. <laughs> oh, so looking back with a modern lens sometimes doesn't work out, is what you're saying? Yeah. I, this is oh. the first time that's ever happened. I think On the spot in for history. Sure. That something hasn't aged. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I did. I watched it and I was like, is this like processing World War One trauma? Like, I don't know Ooh, why. I don't think so. I now think that's... it's just a fun bit. I guess. But why specifically just like... like, was it like mafia? No, because they it's not. It, no, because there's the only it only becomes a machine gun right at the end. Okay, all the other ones. But it's, it's like still a gun. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a gun throughout. Well, except at the end, it's a bow and arrow. Um, so it's talking about just violence in general, like the history of violence told through dance. That's beautiful. Wow, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I agree, but also like I don't know. Also, it's it was fine. It, they were kind of explaining it that like. He finds out that she is in Italy, so he wants to go, and he's demanding, like, a, a direct plane, right? This is all happening during mm-hmm. intermission, but basically telling Horace, like, I'll go with you. I'll be back by Monday or whatever. Monday? I, 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 well, at first, that's what I thought it was. I'm like, you're still performing, but he was actually saying, like, I'll be back in time for the next performance. So I'm like, oh, so is this a... I was like, is this a Sunday? I was this doing is one the... of the yeah, it's one of those famous um shows that doesn't run on the weekend, but does run on Mondays. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's the complete that's opposite. That's how the West End does it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, how, yeah. it's like an West English End... thing. It's like West... walks on the road, shows West... on Mondays. Yeah. Like, yeah. What is a weekend was a genuine question yeah. from, yeah. from right. British <laughs> Maggie Smith. Um so uh did, another did anyone fa- else though want to know what like what the show was besides this number? No. I don't know why I just no. okay. It was just like men, men in Paris, men about town. Men, men about, was, yeah, men in Paris. That's what it's called. I want that spinoff. I was I Sex in the City. It, oh, but... it was Sex in the City. <laughs> I do think that Paris. I feel them. like male male chorus numbers are not that common, mm-hmm. right? Just a, a number of just yeah. a lot of men is like mm-hmm. not something that we see all that often mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i will say watching this made me think of like <laughs> i don't know why but it made me think of like mt like musical theater twinks today and i'm like newsies yeah like newsies i'm like fred mm-hmm. astaire is giving what all these these twinks and newsies people say that yeah. jeremy jordan is today's fred astaire and that's do why say i've that. never seen newsies <gasps> I have also never seen Newsies. It's on our list. This I've seen. I've seen the movie. Why are you all doing this to me right now? <laughs> Why are you personally attacking me? <laughs> well, there's two movies that are. There's two more movies coming up this year. Both Newsies, which is like all boys, and then South Pacific, which has like a full men's chorus as well. Mm. I guess I feel like <clears throat> men's dance cor- I, Newsies does have a lot of dance, obviously, yeah. but I just think like it's different though. This is very like a very featuring, specific featuring men in a chorus. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't find also that. as like there's one man at the middle. Usually, if it's like, if you're gonna do women, or it'll be like a woman. It's uh, it times our girl's best friend. Yeah. yeah. So it's Marilyn yeah. in the middle, and then surrounded by a bunch of men. But no, right. this is I guess man. also the bottle dance in Fiddler. Oh, yeah. worst worst musical to be a female chorus member in. <laughs> I believe I've gone on record <laughs> before in saying that. Uh, you get only the boring pod, numbers. Off pod, we'll discuss. I I, 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 I was in a production of Fiddler once. Oh. So was I. Such a juicy take. It needs to be off Ooh. pod. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be a great, that would be like a great just side dive of like, what are, what are all male chorus numbers? 
Well, maybe we'll have an award yeah. this year. What's the best male men's chorus number of the of the season? We really need to elevate men more. I think men yeah. are really acknowledged especially for the things forgotten... that they do, okay. especially in musical theater. Yeah, the, the silent forgotten majority. Gender. The <laughs> silent majority. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the chorus, anyways. <laughs> um. So apparently, during this performance, um, thirteen canes were prepared for a stare. Uh, he was per- such a perfectionist, he kept breaking them because he would get frustrated at- with his performance that he wasn't doing it perfectly. They knew that that was going to happen, so they, they made I mean, 13 out of the set piece, he breaks the canes. I'm, I'm noticing a, a, yeah. pattern. a pattern. I'm noticing a little <clears throat> something of Al Fred is there. Um, and then uh, the last take, that was the last cane. So And they finished it on the wow. last time. Um, he did have to give up. But isn't that a little bit of like, it's always the last place you find it? Like, <laughs> that was the I've got one cane left. I don't know what you're so saying. This, this, this take you find is that, you be always the... find it in the last place you look. That like yeah. sure. Also, it could be a full lie, and it could be like there's no good story where it's like, and we still had three canes left over just in case. <laughs> so for the myth making part of the film, you obviously have to make it. And it was yeah. The last I just feel cane. like they they would have gotten more canes if there were more takes left. You know what I mean? Well, there's such a. It's hard to find canes nowadays. You know what <laughs> I mean? Canes are canes are a difficult the, thing to source. Yeah. What's the um. Canes and horse-drawn carriages, you know, dying technology. There was yeah. only three left. Shipping delayed. <laughs> there was only the three canes left. Left. <laughs> um, They were licensed cane holders. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this is a great number. I don't really have anything to say about it. Other than no, the no, no, no. That we can listen to it right now. I just got an invitation through the mail. Your presence requested this evening is from top hat, white tie, and tail. Nothing now could take the wind out of my sails. Cause I'm invited to step out this evening in top hat, white tie, and tail. Oh, I'm putting on the top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing off my tails. I'm duding up my shirt front. Putting in the shirt studs, polishing my nails. I'm stepping out, my dear, to breathe an atmosphere that simply reeks with class. And I trust that you'll excuse my dust when I step on the gas. Or I'll be there, putting down the top hat, mussing up my white tie, dancing in the tail. Now we're going to Italy. Now we're going to Italy. 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 We're going to Venice specifically, a place a called big, Lido. Big year for Italy. Big, big year, year for, Italy. for Italy. Molly, having being our Italian correspondent, yeah. Um, please tell us if you've been to Venice. Yes. Have you been I, to? I've been to Venice. I don't care. You're not the Italian correspondent. <laughs> Very specifically, I asked Molly because she was the Italian correspondent. Molly, have you been to Lido in Venice, which is no. a? Okay. Do you know what it is? No. Nope. Do you know what it is? Because apparently you've been to Venice. No, I've only been to the... <laughs> okay, what, then I don't want to hear it. What's it called? The square? The main square? Uh, Brandon, have you been to Venice? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Lido in Venice apparently is like a retaining wall kind of island on like the outskirt of the... Um, Canals. Canal, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and 26,000 people live on this island, which is... That's crazy <laughs> to me. I'm sorry. Um and uh so this is like an actual place it very clearly does not look like this in real life this is like art deco nonsense yeah they this, this, this was a, is really like the small uh small world set absolutely it, it looks is, like exactly it is it's a small world for sure it's this. i've never felt so strongly that they were inside in every single shot you just feel <laughs> how inside they are yes. yeah 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 yes yeah. Something about um, the way water looks inside like that is they dyed it black. They dyed the water black. And the 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 scene where they're like bathing mm-hmm. just that as you know, to set the stage and there's like a, a woman there's I think people there's people on, like, like the beach, splashing yeah. around or whatever. There's just a floaty. Yeah. Um, they called this the big white set. This was always the biggest part of a Fred and Ginger RKO production. Um, this the, the was big square with this, the bridge. Yes, yeah. this set that they built for this movie specifically was so big it took up three, like sound stages, to wow. build this whole thing. It was like a real canal. They really brought wow. boats in. There were three bridges over the River Kwai. Right. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> classic. Not Madison County. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so anyway, so that was very fun to learn about. Um, and then uh, it's just like a fantasy version of Venice. It's obviously not supposed to be real in any way whatsoever. Because we got to keep the tradition of movie musicals where we don't have like real Italy represented. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Italy isn't a real place. And it has to be by water. Returning to my water theory. <gasps> the water theory. The liminal space of the, the liminal ocean. space of water. of water. Yeah. Now, here is where my favorite character in this film comes in. This is no surprise that I love a uh, uh, jokey character matron. actress matron lady. <laughs> and this probably has the best one in any movie I've ever seen. Wow. This is Madge. I wish this I had this is Madge. is Madge, and then it's just a match cut of every punchline she has in this movie. Um, she's very funny. I need to look up this actress's name really quick because I did not write it down, unfortunately. Helen Broderick is Madge Hardwick. Um, she's great. She's a ten out of ten. Every line is funny. She's perfect. It's giving the same energy as um, it took fifteen thousand men to take my, take yes. my place, like that. It's it's uh, Christmas. White. white Christmas. Christmas come a white. White Christmas. Um, she's very funny. Yeah. So uh, these are also, this is where we get my favorite dress that's worn in the movie, which is not the ostrich dress, which we'll talk about in a minute. Oh, I thought that was. Not the final dress, the Piccolino dress, which is also very pretty, but not my favorite. It's the black dress she wears to, uh, she wears before dinner. When she's just like walking around after she's like, the, like been sunbathing or whatever. Puffy sleeve situation. Puffy sleeve, huge hat. She has the big hat on. Mm. If Bellini makes dresses like this, everyone needs to go buy his garments. Because that this is, is incredible. That is what I'm saying. The entire movie, I was like, Bellini is, I mean, this man I is I haven't even talked about artist. this performance, by the way, which is nuts. <laughs> his performance is Bellini? You don't need to. The dresses speak for itself. <laughs> You don't need to be talking about Bellini's performance when the performance is in the threads. Okay. It's on her. She looks great. The gowns the gowns are capital G gowns, period. Capital B beautiful gowns, period. Like I mean, Molly, it would do you be have a great. favorite dress it, in this movie? Oh, it's it's cheek to cheek. It's boring, but that's It is? Yeah. Mm. Do you the know Oscar anything feathers. about that dress yet? I know that it like caused a mess and that it was like well, not I mean, appreciated, through, so but it's through, appreciated yeah. by me. It, it sure. was worth it was worth the effort. Worth in my the, I mean, even during opinion. the scene, all you could see was just ostrich feathers all over. All over the set. The set. Brandon, did you have a favorite dress in this movie? It's also the feathers. It's the feathers. It's so I, I love the feathers. I think it's beautiful. I I think it's a little bulky right on the shoulders. I, like, love, I think it makes it look her look a little oversized. I love the wrapped version with the capelet. But I think after the yeah. I think that but the big shoulders are there to then so that then when it reveals oh. the open back. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's I a balance there. Yeah, no, I got it. Thank you. Looking, looking back at this one that you're referencing, the black one, it, it, the sleeves are really good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the white trim right along the bottom of the hat. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, enough. I don't know. We're gay. We get it. I, I will. I, I also like the, I did like the sleepwear, the loungewear. The, lounge the dressing good. gown. The even, dressing the one, gown. even the one where she comes in when they r arrive and her and Madge are just like having lunch mm -hmm. and she's like wearing like shorts. I was like, you look great. She looks great. Bellini. No. The last the last look too. Okay. So fast forward, I'm skipping all the plot because there's so much I would have to explain in order to explain And why would you? You can just you've already listened to my summary. We've already so. listened to RJ's summary, which is so I do think point. we haven't really talked about Bates yet. And That's I just point. I just need you to know that like the way that I like forgot about this guy and this character and then mm. my heart immediately sang when he came on screen and I remembered him from watching this movie mm. as a child because I'm pretty sure that he was in more than one friend ginger playing like essentially oh. the same character the same, yes. the same part yep. yeah the I same parts love the this same man parts. he's actually from England um the same parts. he came over to America and like fully did this role where he was like a he was always like a valet or whatever um or a butler this was always yeah. the role he played in every film he was in. And he's like just, 20 years. He's been just like gallivanting around because Horace sends him to spy on Dale. I was going to mm -hmm. say Roberta. I was, again, mixing up Ooh. movies. Uh, oh. he, he gets sent to spy on Dale. So, so we get to just be treated to like bits of him just like being in places there. And yeah. it's amazing. It's Swimming, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a movie that's like that 
where it's someone spying on someone else, and I'm trying to remember it. It's like a very specific spy kids. No, no, it's like an old movie like this. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, what I loved about Bates is the use of the gender neutral royal we. Mm-hmm. Revolutionary. <laughs> It's so dumb. It's such a dumb bit, but it's so funny. But it's so funny because they were were like, their punchlines back regarding Bates were also in the us's and the they's. And I'm like, ha. Ah. Molly, did you recognize that um, his name was, he was Bates the Valet, which is also from Downton Abbey. His Mr. Name Bates. Was Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Uh, Downton yeah, Abbey fan, Brandon? Downton Abbey? Okay. No. Are you a period? Brandon, what do you like in media? I feel like we've hit a lot of things that are not your cup of tea. That's my that's my brand. Your brand is, no. is not liking anything. Contrarian, mm-hmm. contrarian <laughs> pop culture. Just you just like top hat. That's the only thing you've ever. He enjoyed. likes drag race. He likes drag race. I like more than drag race. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay to just like. It's okay to just like the thing. one popular thing. Yeah, yeah. to be stereotypical that's, like that. That's, that's totally moving to fine. MTV because it's so popular. It can't yeah, be that's contained by VH1 it's not anymore. Niche anymore. We're we're. We're MTV baby. I like uh, Great British Bake Off, so that's my British. Okay. That's my okay. in okay, there. Yeah, so yeah. That's your subject matter expertise. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Do you, okay, do okay. you have any? Do you have any thoughts on the Mexican Week conundrum <laughs> from this most recent season? Not this. As someone who oh, lives in we'll Austin, save that for <laughs> the other off. Uh, as someone who lives proximate to Mexico, is that what you're saying? Cl- closer yeah. to Mexico than a British person, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that <is laughs> Very clearly, none of them have been to Mexico. Do we need to talk about any of this plot? No, but think, you have been. I know dan- you talked about Bates. But you've yeah. been dancing around this stupid dress. So when are we yeah, getting to the time? Dancing, dancing around. This, this dancing around. Dancing around. <laughs> I've been doing a little soft shoe around the dress. Yeah, Jesus. So here's the thing. Ginger, the dress was designed by Bellini. G- the dress was designed by Ginger. <gasps> Ginger designed the dress. Oh. oh. Plot twist. So she apparently was very into like costume design. Like that was like a fascination of hers. Mm. Um, and she didn't really get to do it a lot. Because they had like a, they had always had the same costume because design. Because she was a woman. Right, right. Yeah, so she shouldn't have been contributing creative ideas. No, no, no. And yeah. to what she I wears. don't think women can sew either, so it's weird. Um, yeah. But, um, so she designed this dress. Uh, they hadn't finished it in time during the rehearsals, I think was the story or something like that. So basically the first time she wore it was the day of the shoot. <gasps> And it was. This is. We know. We know how. We know how it looks. You know how feathers are. And you know what they say. You don't experiment on Thanksgiving, and you don't wear a dress for the very first time on uh, on, on the shoot on set with Fred Astaire. And here's the thing, <laughs> you too. Got there, you got there. You got yeah. there. <laughs> Fred's. If we want to boil down Fred's, like, if if he whole if his whole thing was like, you have to be able to see the dance. You have to be able to see the movement mm. of the body, the lines, the ostrich feather gown does to an extent hinder her lines. Now, I will say it adds movement, movement, which is like incredible, and I think that's why it works so well in the scene for sure. But um, I think he was upset about that and the fact that it wasn't fully, the feathers were not fully staying on like they should. So he like apparently yelled at Ginger because he was so mad at the situation. We love a man yelling at a woman. And this is like Gene and, Gene and, um, Debbie, Gene all over, Debbie. all over yeah. again. Yeah. Um, so he yelled at her. She broke down into tears. Her mom apparently became a quote wild rhinoceros, and then like made him feel bad for making her feel bad. Um, and then blacklisted like twenty celebrities. Yeah, started as, the red as, scare. And yeah. then started, <laughs> and then started that McCarthy. Was, this was the inciting incident. This, this, was, the inciting this yeah. was the origin. This is the Joker story. Yes. <laughs> Joker <laughs> origin story. So. The the point is to say is that it ended up being fine. I mean, it ended up working because they sent it back to the seamstresses. They got the feathers a little bit more tamped down. Obviously, they're still, even in the film, you still see some come off. But I, I guess it was more extreme in the first version of the dress. Um, it looks beautiful. looks great. And then later, obviously, they, like, reconciled and it was, they, they worked it out. But he, um, he bought her a necklace that was a feather and then he called her feathers fred's like nickname for her was feathers and it was like a very sweet endearing like that's sweet it was our it was a thing that happened once and now we've moved past it or whatever but it was i liked that little story about uh about that um and then they i wanted to talk a little bit about her oh yes brandon we're only gonna talk about the dress (laughs) no i'm gonna talk what else happened in the scene what else happened 
They just stood in the dress, right? That's all that happened? Wait, I have two other things to talk about, and then we can talk about the song. Okay. So, famously, there are two choreographers to this film. He just stood there, and that's why it was so... And that's why, was that's so why he was so brilliant. mad, because even in stillness, the feathers were molting. Everywhere. You <laughs> could a whole dance, and she was just like, no, because I'm wearing this dress. <laughs> and she got a whole different dance, and she just stood still, just stood and they just were... Rotated her in the dress. The whole scene. <laughs> Five minutes. That's it. <laughs> so, this is 1935. Uh, the Hayes Code. We all know what the Hayes Code is if I say the Hayes Code. No, but please. please. I absolutely do, but I think you should tell the yeah, listeners. Absolutely. The, Hayes, the Hayes Code started in 1934. It ended in 1968 when the MPAA took over. And it was basically the Code of Ethics that was federally regulated for film. So, it was like... Th- there was like a censorship board that would like screen your film and then it would be like, you need to change this or slight, screen- slight fact check. So it's oh. not that it was federally regulated. It's that the federal government said they were going to regulate the film industry and the film industry said, this we'll our, adopt these we'll codes in mm. anticipation of that so that you don't get involved. Mm. We're going to regulate ourselves. So it was Hollywood's own censorship. Oh, okay. Uh, rules. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that changed about this movie was Bellini. He has this line where he was like, I give women the kiss and men the sword. Mm -hmm. But the original line was, I give men the sword and women the whip. So they had that changed. Um, well, I thought it was going to be that he was gay, but I guess. Yeah, no, I thought the but... sword. And the, I feel like Hayes yeah. is usually brought up to talk about. But but, but the reason I bring it up is because but, yeah. because it had just started in 1934, the Hayes Code. Mm-hmm. So basically the censorship board knew that there were multiple people cast in this film who were known to be gay. And they were like, we don't want to see any of that queer shit on our movie screens. Okay. You keep that shit to yourself. So they went specifically, apparently they went specifically to the guy who played Bates and the guy who played Horace. And they were like, you got it. Oh, and, and Bellini. They were like, you, you got it. You have to tamp it down. Now, all of them, I looked into their history. They were all married to women. So I, I, but that does not that that means anything. I just mean to say, I do love, I love both the idea that like, they're all, they're all just gay men and, and they're being talked to. But I also love the idea that like Hollywood has not encountered a real gay man before. So they're just, Talking to flamboyant straight men. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Them got talking to. Yeah. yeah. So that was one thing that was, got brought up. And then I found out this other thing. So there were two choreographers for this movie. Fred Astaire basically choreographed all of the Fred and Ginger stuff. And then Hermes Pan, I think his name is her. It's probably pronounced Hermes, is my guess. Um, Hermes. Hermes. I don't think it was Hermes, only I'm because just he's. Kidding. Oh. Kidding. <laughs> but I thought about it. Okay. So yeah, Hermes Pan um, was the other Hermes choreographer, Pan. and he did. He did uh, all of the like ensemble choreography, especially for like the Piccolino number. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he would also learn. He would dance with Fred as Ginger to learn the to, learn to like choreo. figure out mm-hmm. the choreo, yeah. and then Ginger would watch it and then take over for Hermes. Mm. So he was like very skilled. Um, he was uh, apparently known to be gay in the industry, and I included this picture of him in our notes because I was like, this man is so handsome. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe men were handsome at this time. It was shocking to me. Oh, um, yeah. And he never he married. Like... And he never, I mean, he never married, but he never like had like a lifelong, there was, there was, in his Wikipedia section, it was like, there was not like a lifelong partner or anything. It was just like, yeah. he, was, he was friends he... with, there's like a really famous Spanish artist, or maybe he's a Mexican artist. I'm sorry. Diego. I don't remember what it was. I should have written it down. But Rivera? he like, did his... Wait, what was it? Diego Rivera? I think that's right. Rita Kahlo's. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. The muralist. Um, he did a yeah, yeah. He did a he did a he did a portrait of him. He does he huh. has like a portrait he made of him, which is um very cool. Um no, no no, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at art history, in fact. This man is another class you didn't pay attention to another, in college, but yeah. you know. He is yeah. like objectively handsome, but also looks so kind. Yes. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like he also seems handsome because he looks like a, a lovely energy just based on this picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean the the just like what you would want in like a dance a choreographer, a dance captain. Exactly. Like you want them to be approachable and Yeah, your rehearsal runner. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that was all I had on the background of um cheek to cheek. Now we will like on to, Hermes. Yes. On Hermes. Now there was dancing in this number. I know it wasn't clear earlier <clears throat> if, if there was dancing in cheek to cheek, but they are dancing. What I did, I was going to bring up the 
plot point at this portion of this number because oh it's so funny it's so funny because she dale is fully like this is your husband right and the way that marge no she doesn't Madge, say this is your husband no, right like, because in, that would yeah, solve that, the problem yeah, that, sorry. in <laughs> the her mind yes. get this number in her mind she's watching okay this is finally the husband and the wife i'm finally seeing them and madge and jerry are fully like still not saying like you are my friend that i'm trying to you know to like match make with my other friend it's fully like yeah isn't he a isn't he a treat like he can be a handful blah 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 that can still be misconstrued it's like are you are you open what are you doing and so like when they finally start dancing she has this like realization of like well i guess if madge isn't I guess if she's okay with this then i guess i'll dance with you and like that goes into dancing dance to cheek to cheek so like the full conceit is that during the dance she is fully like well what if i do uh court a married man <laughs> Basically, yeah. What if I well, do be? What if it is a polycule and we I are think, in like a romantic throuple? I think that what it is is her falling impressive. in love despite herself, right? Yes. That she does not intend to have a relationship with this man. She, that's very that's very clearly against her personal mm-hmm. principles. Mm-hmm. But she's so swept up in his being charm, with him, charisma, yeah. yeah, which is so sweet because we know the fact that he's not actually married, right? And so yes. she's falling in love despite herself. I love. That. So it starts on the dance floor and then in a move very similar to uh, the best things happen while you're dancing from White Christmas, mm-hmm. they move on to a separate uh, solo dance floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, the set is so beautiful. It's like when they go across the bridge and there's the wide shot of them like at her, you can even from far away see her like ostrich feathers moving. I was like, <laughs> God damn it, this movie's good. <laughs> um, ostrich and feathers the- needed top billing. It went, yeah, yeah it's ostrich feathers, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers in that order. Bates. 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 Um, should we listen to a little featuring bit of Cheek Madge. to Cheek? Featuring and introducing. <laughs> uh, here's Cheek to Cheek. Heaven. I'm in heaven. And my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. And I seem to find the happiness I seek When we're out together dancing cheek to cheek Heaven, I'm in heaven And the cares that hung around me through the week Seem to vanish like a gambler's lucky streak when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek oh i love to climb a mountain and apparently this is the most famous peak. number that they've ever danced together this is oh. the one that people know the best i guess and i've always assumed that the <clears throat> la la land when they go to the black void and do the ballroom dance i i was thinking of this number as what it's referencing i mean it's probably referencing more than one thing but that's kind of what i Mm. drew a connection with Mm -hmm. um that makes sense Mm -hmm. i think the i think the the first number or i'm yeah their first number together the one in the rain i think that one is more like the prius scene where they like Mm -hmm. he does a step and she does a step and then they do a step together where i think yeah that's right it's this is the more romantic sequence um cheek cheek is their most famous number together blah 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 it's choreographed to explain the plot that has been told as to where these characters find themselves in this moment ginger is apprehensive of his affection He's determined to move them back. Um, and then the dance itself happens through an ever increasing supported series of back bends. Because apparently Ginger was like super back flexible, which is a thing that I didn't know someone could be. Uh, they dance the night away on the abandoned dance floor, allowing her to fall in love with him and allowing the audience to fall in love with them. This was what I wrote today, just on a whim. Beautiful. You wrote that? I did. I did write that. I thought it was a quote at first when I started reading it. Then I was like, oh, no, this part I wrote. This one I did not copy. No copy editing required. No copy editing so required, honestly. enamored with your own writing. <laughs> it's just like a, it's a gift. I was like, guys. Um, but yeah, I, I love, I mean, like, it's so, the last one especially, when she's like fully that, I just demonstrated <laughs> To the listeners, this. Adam is doing an effortless. Maybe your, maybe your partner I do a great impression of a hop dog. Yeah. yeah. Support, 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 upper back, upper back. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I wish the listeners could see this. Oh, it was beautiful. I, I stood up and, and, and supported Adam's back. 
Molly? <laughs> Thoughts yeah. on backs. Thoughts on backs and mm, I'm support. Pro. <laughs> I'm pro. Pro back. Backs. Everyone should have one, I think. Yeah. I like backs. Molly, um, thoughts on the number? I think I've shared my thoughts. It's beautiful. She's falling in love despite herself. The dress is amazing. I don't have good vocabulary for talking about the dance, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, thoughts on... I mean, you think you thought we weren't going to talk about it, so now's your chance. Now's yeah, your chance to talk worried. about the dance I itself. Worried. I mean, it, it, it's so good. What else? There's nothing to say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Great, perfect. Let's move on. Great. I, uh, uh, how, I, it really... Th- this is what I will say. Watching this, having never actually seen it, like, that, that is what makes... Um, that's, like, that's what's good, is, like, when you got... Having to... Getting to experience this for the first time. Yeah. That it's just it's just beautiful and it's rare where something will actually stop you and actually pull you in mm-hmm. that good um it's it's so good oh I, there's a there's an mvp i think my mvp is wrapped up in here so i'm gonna save that bit i i think that i mean like watching this yesterday i felt like watching this like my heart was in my throat like i was like so struck by like how perfect it was like shot and like everything that happens in the sequence and the way they move together it's so slow and controlled and i think that that is really what makes it so good is that it's Mm -hmm. not quick and showy Mm -hmm. and if you think in like i think the foot like the footwork the steps Mm -hmm. they're not there's like a little bit of like soft shoe in there there's a little Mm -hmm. bit but they're really just it's really just classic ballroom yeah It, it is it's uh they would both win dancing with the stars and we'll say it here on this pod today. I don't we'll think anyone it. has ever said that. But we did. Brave enough to say it. These they are the, historical stances the, we will take. They were the original Fred pros. Astaire, yeah, Fred Astaire would be with Dancing with the Stars and Mussolini needs to relax. Absolutely. <laughs> dancing the Roomba with his partner, Fred Astaire. Yeah, they would be pros. Absolutely. They would be pros. And Hermes would be the guest. The guest yeah, and judge. Hermes, yeah, Hermes. I think Hermes would be. He'd be Hermes, the is judge. Bruno. Yeah. Hermes is Bruno. Yeah. Hermes is Bruno for sure. Hermes is Bruno. You dance with a wild now, you tell that me that Bo- the character Bellini and Bruno Tamioli are not, the, not same the same person. person. I think that, yeah. 100%. I think if Madge did... is the host. I've never watched Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Madge is the host, but Famously, Leah... I'm a recent convert, but it's really good because I also okay. used to be like very like, ballroom no, isn't real is dance. Dumb. That's a take I'll say for another that's not. Oh. That's not a take that I have. That's... I just... <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a take that I had. That's a take I had until recently. Wow. You said I also used to be, as if like, uh, as we all know, Molly... As we all know, me and Molly were both anti-ballroom. We Molly and I were... I just think it's time staunch. for people to know our history, Molly. Yeah. What? Yeah. What is... <laughs> now that's finally out there. Um, Brandon, yeah. what was your aversion to ballroom? Hmm uh what was my aversion to ballroom I, why did you consider it not you're, you're actually uh i think part of it is like <sighs> i didn't really have a lot of exposure to it so i think that's truly what it was mm-hmm. um so like when it was like when dancing with the stars was a tv show i was like what is this this isn't what i consider to be dance but i recognize that's just because i didn't really know what it is but mm-hmm. it's also i think the only thing well like another thing about it is it's so partner centric mm-hmm. and yeah. if we really want to go on a tangent there being a queer person growing up whenever like every partner dance you have to learn is gendered it's like it's kind of a weird place to be um, Mm -hmm. looking back so i think that is probably also what maybe kept me a little kept me away from it a little bit that makes sense yeah i always i always feel like the women have the harder job than the men do so like on dancing with the stars i'm like if like if a woman doesn't like a, a female celebrity doesn't look as good as like the male celebrities do i'm like yeah but the men are just like having their arm out and then the pro is like spinning around them like a top and it's like but a different take <sighs> okay who knew this Brandon, would in so many go ahead whoa, whoa. were you a were you a so you think you can dance person i was oh yeah, yeah. yeah. i do like that show. Like, yeah. went, went to the tours like <gasps> oh, amazing there's, okay, again well, there's a very specific yeah what was oh. the british version of that show no so you shall we dance, strictly, strictly come ballroom. dance strictly dancing strictly but dancing. that's their dancing that's the stars, dancing i believe stars. So oh, think you can the dance. first. Yeah, like, so you think you can dance. I thought there's an original So I thought it was box. Strictly Come Dancing, so and dance then there was Strictly was... Come Ballroom. So you think Strictly Come, no. Strictly Ballroom is a Baz Luhrmann film. 
Oh, yeah. which I think yeah. is where probably Strictly Come Dancing pulls its name. What? Ah, uh, okay. No, I no, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing, no, yeah, and it's I'm funny because Adam hates Adam Moulin Rouge, hates so I was going to say, yep, yeah, it's part of the Moulin Rouge Everybody trilogy, which explains something. why Everyone Adam something. hasn't seen it. That's yeah. why RJ was saying, like, don't go there, don't go there, don't, don't go there. Don't say the BL. Uh, that, so not that BL. Was, it, was, it was on Fox, and I think it was, like, yes. it was following American Idol. American Idol. It was, like, it was what, the same format. What it was live voting, American two shows Idol a week. Was dance. What if what if America's idols could move? Could dance, yeah. yeah. Famously, that's how we got Twitch. Famous mm-hmm. famous Ellen DJ Twitch was from uh-huh. So You Think You Can Dance. Uh-huh. Well, I simply bring up Strictly Come Dan- Dancing. Yeah. Uh, to point out the fact that there was a West End adaptation of this in 2012. And the oh. featuring, featuring oh, a, winner a winner of Strictly oh. Come Dancing. Like the pro mm-hmm. or the celeb? The celeb. The celeb. <gasps> was an actor. Wow. Yeah. Um, is it a person that we I would know? It was, I think I, no, they're British. I read. <laughs> I read Molly's that. The, I think Molly's the, the resident potential, like, Part of it was that when he was on Strictly Come Dancing, I think they 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 would they would say, and I haven't found the clips that like he that, was like, giving Fred Astaire. And uh, I, I think he said in interviews. I read this where he like was like I looked up to Fred Astaire a lot. Yeah, that as, was my like, idol. Kid, blah blah blah. Yeah, I was my And idol. then it became a, a vehicle for him, and who knows what he's doing now. See, apparently, it was very you, good. The, that's the what you You got to manifest. Ladies I mean, I imagine. I mean, yeah, I would see it. I would want to see the set. I would want yeah. to see the set. Apparently, the set was incredible. The only thing they said there was too many songs. I want to see the guys, which is funny because songs. the source material. Right. So, did they add more Berlin songs? Yeah, they just put in a shit ton of Berlin songs. <sighs> I'm glad they didn't write new material because God forbid. This is what I'm saying. Why is throw Sia in there? Why is to... musical Ugh. the stage, <laughs> the stage music, the form of musical in on a stage? Why are they so afraid of 90 minute musicals? Why do you have to add songs? Make it two X. Zero why is Frozen tight ninety? Why is Frozen two X? If you can sit for a movie for one for one ninety minute for ninety minutes, you can sit. I think it's to give yeah. the performers a break. No, <sighs> I don't buy it. They're BFAs the performer... for a reason. Okay, they are BFAs for a reason. They it's, went to interlock. All... You know what it is? It's the unions. It's the unions. Yeah. And now we've, I and am now unions. we've come. We're anti-union the... on this podcast. <laughs> I think what it really is, is I think that the general Broadway audience thinks that they are not getting their money's worth if, if it's not to act. If it's Wow. I really think it's like that middle, like upper middle you need, class. And you need the, the cash from intermission. And they want that like and extra they, revenue. They want sure. you to buy concessions. Yeah. They want, exactly. you they want you to get that sippy cup and walk it into a theater. Also something. I directed a show one time where the producer was like, this needs to be long enough that there can be an intermission because our theater will not survive without the wow. intermission. Because we need to sell Jesus. Okay. Well, we need the actor, by the way, was Tom Chambers, which is a level of too far into British uh, pop culture. I do not know who it is. <laughs> uh, perfect. Okay. So I was right. Yeah. Um, I but just Cheek to Cheek is great. Cheek to Cheek is great. Um, I have a I have a few references to films that Cheek to Cheek features in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in Boss Baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's, the, classic. it's the song Absolutely. that plays in heaven where the babies DreamWorks? are made and sorted on an assembly yes, line. It is DreamWorks. Yes. Voiced by Alec Baldwin. Mm. As the titular uh, baby. As the titular, the titular baby, baby, comma boss. baby comma boss. <laughs> um, And then uh, it's in the Green Mile. So I've never seen the Green Mile. I've never read the Green Mile. <sighs> Adam, um, And it's the, the, it's the last film Oscar that John winner. watches as his last wish before he's executed. Oh. Great mm. film. Great film. Yeah. Didn't he just pass away recently too? That so. actor who plays him? Hmm. Like I think a couple years ago. Um, I wrote down in my notes <clears throat> that I think this is the most romantic dancing song ever written for a musical. So like it is a song that is exists primarily for the dance, but the lyrics are, are romantic. very romantic. The most romantic. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's a very simple concept, but it mm-hmm. just works on like a very fundamental level. Can I tell you my favorite part about this number, though? Yes. And it's not even during the number. It's as it ends. They just, like, ends and they lean against the wall. And they look like they haven't been doing anything. And it's so... It was so chic that I was like... Chic oh, to chic. Chic, 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 chic to chic. Chic, chic to chic. Um, chic to chic. I really loved the way that the scene ended. Because I li- I almost liked that it didn't have, like, a... Ada! Like, it didn't have, like, a button. A button. It just kind of, like, fell back Ginger into, knew. like... Ginger, Ginger knew yeah. to not button it. Yeah. Right. They Ginger looked said, at Ginger no and... Needed. No buttons They looked at her and go... No buttons the button? on this dress. Yeah. Honey, zippers Jeez. only. <laughs> <laughs> no buttons on these feathers. <laughs> She's crying. <laughs> and bleeding out her and shoes. And bleeding. <laughs> bleeding out of her shoes, yeah. Perfect. 
It's a great. I mean, it's, it's 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 art. It's literally art. I don't know. There's literally no other way to describe what the scene is. It's so good. And then I don't know. The plot resolves. <laughs> Who cares? And then everyone figures out who's Bates her. has been following them, Bates and it turns been. out that even though she decided to marry Bellini, marry Bellini out of like, I don't know, just being sick of the situation. Yeah. Uh, Bates was pretending to be the pastor, and so they are in fact not married, which means the, she is free to the marry. Clergyman, I think is what he calls himself. Yeah, the clergyman. clergyman. Beth. Yeah, it was. I I looked at his face and I thought, like, this guy's definitely been a Dracula at some point. Mm. He looks like a um, an Igor. There, there, yes, right. And, Angular features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is giving young Frankenstein. Yeah, I thought. Very, very. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I do think that where the film another musical slightly mm. where the film slightly falls apart for me is that she finds out that Jerry is in fact not Horace, and mm-hmm. that, you know he's not married, and they can get together. And then there's like this long period of time where like the um the Madge and Horace and Bellini are all on this boat that Bates They're has in the dragged middle of the ocean, the of the ocean. Run, right? Which is where Piccolino happens is like mm-hmm. in that period of time. And I was like, this is a lot of time for the like, it's basically resolved, but there's like one more detail we need to resolve part, but like not to the actual we're together. I wish that they just had a number that was just them being in love <laughs> now that they could be together. <laughs> what I find fascinating about this number Piccolino, which is the last number we're about to talk about is that I don't think it's that good. I think it's the weakest number. I think it's the weakest number. I agree. And I, I still think it's like good. Like if put this in any other movie, and I'd be like, this was the best part of this movie. Yes, but yeah. like of put all it, of the things sure. we've seen so put far. Put this on think, Dear Evan Hansen, it would be the best. I think as long as you don't look at it. I think if you look at it for the chorus, it's great. Yeah. 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 The chorus Especially because you get those big. I mean, I counted yes. there were 20 couples. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's very Busby Berkeley when the, the crane goes up and you like see them from above. It was mm-hmm. interesting that they were doing like fades. Like they were doing fades of like during pieces. yeah they were like clipping together the it was like clipping pieces of it's the, because so... this number was like five minutes longer and then they cut a lot of it out oh. um but um I thought it was okay work. yeah it's ironic because um, Irving Berlin worked like apparently a ton on the song like this was the hardest song he ever, like ever wrote up until this point or something like that and then. Irving, or I'm sorry, not Irving. Uh, Fred Astaire heard it and he was like, I don't really like it, so I'm going to let Ginger have the solo. <laughs> so that's why she sings the song. I mean, <laughs> he's like, not wrong. No, he's not wrong at all. Cause it's the, sorry, it, Irving. Are the lyrics like... And she's still very good in it. It's explaining what the piccolino is. Yeah, I think, I assume that this is really how it happened of like, this is an existing melody from Italy. And then Irving Berlin brought it over and then he wrote lyrics about like, here is a song that I added piccolino. lyrics to, like yeah. that's what the lyrics are. Is the is the story the lyrics of is the song of writing the song? The song. Yes, yeah. that's the that's the story oh, of the song because it's about a it's oh, a, a Latin a Latin in Brooklyn who wrote something about I don't remember what the exact lyrics it's were. Clearly, like uh, someone in, on Tin Pan Alley, yes, uh, <laughs> had to Pan sit Alley. down and write lyrics to the song "The Piccolino." Oh my God! Brandon sending chat. Instead of just talking out loud, he's sending us the he's sending us the lyrics. So oh, that's the lyrics. I'm Look to at give that. You some material. He's he said, he's being our live researcher here. That that is that is actually that's my uh that's my greatest interest. Just like finding source material and just being just a live a live responder, a first yes. responder, a first responder. responder. Thank you to our first responder. Hold on, hold on. Kinda, kinda. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> a principal. A principal. We'll clap. You know what? I'll clap at 6 a p.m. for you principal. tomorrow, so that way you know that I appreciate you. Yeah, clap at 5 o'clock for our NHS workers. Yeah, 5 a.m. 5 yeah. a.m. when we're all driving to work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this is, let's listen to a little bit of it. The Piccolino. By the Adriatic waters, Venetian sons and daughters are strumming a new tune upon their guitar. It was written by a Latin, a gondolier who sat in his home out in Brooklyn and gazed at the stars. He sent his melody across the sea to Italy, and we know they wrote some words to fit that catchy bit and christened it the Piccolino. And we know that it's the reason why everyone this season is humming and strumming a new melody. Come okay. To 
that was it. Then the movie resolves, and then they are happily ever after. It is an unfortunate thing that this ends the movie after we've been treated to cheek to cheek. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It at just, least they do have a like a little bit one more little reprise. They have one little right, swell right on the right bridge. as it ends, so it doesn't end with like nothing. Thank God. But it's funny because it's fully like the fanfare into the the end title card. Yeah, basically. I mean, I think I do think I like have to give up on the idea of finales and movie musicals because I feel like what we've proven know, is that they Molly. are very much they're the exception and not the rule. Yes, mm-hmm. well, they the... should be the rule, but they're not. Molly, what was the last great finale that we saw? I can't. She'd even say Jamie because it was like a full West Side. Is there a finale in West Side? No, no, it very the... famously. <laughs> Very famously, they bring a Huge dead body. They bring really a dead body and his, it's his literally corpse a starts tap march. dancing. It's, it's a funeral it's march. My brain was like something about West Side in the finale. It's like really, yeah. I would um, say, I would yeah. say maybe Mamma Mia if you're Please including that like fun little bit during the credits, <laughs> how they like all like kind of perform in their like seventies. Yeah, but it's, the question was it. my favorite, I believe. It was or just like the last which one, one I enjoyed. The last great. So Mamma Mia would not be great. in that category. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Which was our of. second movie. In the Heights, yeah. in the Heights, basically had one. So yeah, I would you didn't, say, yeah. You didn't think it was as it good was as a reprise. It been. I wish it were a, a an original as finale song. Unsung song. Yeah. But... I mean, really, nothing's better than Hello Dolly's, where you just get like a repeat of all the numbers up until that point a in the full, movie. A full medley. Yeah. Full <laughs> in Sunday Best. Yeah. Well, let's move on. So what are critics saying about this movie? So this is a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and I really only have one review here from Roger Ebert, obviously writing post, uh, post. he did not write as a contemporary of, of uh, 1935. Mm-hmm. So he's looking back. This is from the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, this is what he closes with, and I thought it was, he doesn't get sappy in his reviews. We've read a lot of Roger Ebert reviews on this podcast, and he doesn't normally get sappy. He's not, like, cynical, typically, but he doesn't, like, get, like, really weepy or anything. But I thought this was, was very sweet. He said, because we are human, because we are bound by gravity and the limitations of our bodies, because we live in a world where the news is often bad and the prospects disturbing... There is a need for another world somewhere, a world where Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers live, where everyone is a millionaire and hotel suites are the size of ballrooms and everything is creased, combed, brushed, shined, polished, powdered, and expensive, where you seem to find the happiness you seek, where you're out together dancing cheek to cheek. It doesn't even matter if you really find it as long as you seem to find it because appearances are everything in this world. And then he quotes uh, the rain song. And I just thought that was so sweet that he was like recognizing that like, Part like I think part of the reason that it works so well is because like we're allowed to escape into this world, and I think this movie coming out in the 1930s and it being about like the most extravagant millionaire, like everyone is rich, everyone watching this movie is in the middle of like the Great Depression, but you're going to escape from the reality into the world of like these rich people and their silly little frivolous lives the where where everything's beautiful and they live in hotels and everything's so sweet. I just like I think it says a lot about. Like, where the world was, where Americans were at the time of, like, watching this movie and, like, why it was so popular. Because it's not like the plot is, like, why you're, like... And you know what was great about Top Hat? Hijinks. <laughs> um, but it's, like, so fun to escape in this, like, obviously not real place. But I don't... It's not... I don't have a problem with it. It's not bad. It's, like, part of the fun of, like, getting to leave where I am. I just thought it was very sweet. <clears throat> it is. No, it's, I think it's very touching. It's, it's hitting me hard tonight. And I think that uh, our listeners should put this in their back pocket as like a film you can watch when things are feeling a little bit too much. It can transport mm-hmm. you to this other place where Venice is all inside, you know? I think that's why the Fred and Ginger movies are so oft referenced as like the idealized like Hollywood of like everything's a cinematic picture in a dream. And it just like allows you to not be the person you are in the moment you're watching it, which is like, I don't know, partially the reason people watch movies Mm -hmm. to get an escape. Uh, But on Letterboxd, the people are saying Kevin T. Porter gave it four stars and said Fred Astaire is the sexiest tomboy beanpole on the planet. Four stars. Oh, yeah. Uh, Beanpole rights. Beanpole rights. Beanpole rights. Liz gave it four. Representation matters. (laughs) Liz gave it four and a half stars and says uh, literally every character not played by either Ginger Rogers or Fred Astaire is gay. We've discussed. Confirmed. confirmed The Hayes Code did not allow it to be fully out there, but confirmed. And then Olivia gave it five stars and said seeing this film for the first time is my opposite of Joker origin story. (laughs) 
So RJ. also discussed tonight. Yes. All things We're on the pulse. Discuss. Um, before we move into our closer, who is everybody's MVP? I'm going to go first. Mine is shockingly Madge. Mm. Big shock. RJ. Mine is uh, Bellini's talent as a dressmaker. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the gowns, beautiful gowns. I <laughs> honestly is it, it just is, the gowns? Is it is the gowns costume design. Be- it is absolutely the costume design gowns, beautiful gowns. Great, Brandon. I think it is Ginger Rogers's back bends in cheek to cheek specifically. Oh, yeah, that's oh, it. Yes. That's it. And her yeah. hands. I think go back and watch her hands. One time I watched cheek to cheek. All I could watch were her hands, and just they're not like ballet hands, but they're. Just watch the hands. Yeah, <laughs> Molly. I mean, this is. Do you have boring. anything better than hands, Molly? I mean, <laughs> give it I'm to us. I'm just gonna say Fred Astaire. <laughs> I guess let's. <laughs> it's give... boring, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. I think it though, is. if I have to yeah. give it to something more specific, I'm gonna say the way that he looks at Ginger Rogers when they do the lean at the end of Cheek to Cheek, because mm. he really sells it in an acting moment that he's just totally enamored, and it's lovely. Mm. I think my favorite Fred Astaire moment is the sand. Mm. number mm. it is there's just like something about like fully like subverting what she didn't like about him and then her like kind of like almost like oh he went up to me um reaction to his dancing was just like oh and i mean so well i think my favorite fred astaire roman is the way he ends uh top hat white tie and tails he shoots the no, no, the way the, the after <laughs> after he shoots everybody, he does like a little button at the end. And I think it's it's very charming. Yeah. I think my favorite Fred Astaire moment is <clears throat> when they're on the carriage and he mm-hmm. looks through. He looks down. Yeah. He looks through. And something about that bit is great. And then I think the way that we didn't discuss this, but the way his like his his feet move. His, I, I think he's like tap dancing while he's sitting right there, mm-hmm. like with the sound of the yes. horse flops. Yeah. It's just like so it's musical small, but it's really good yeah there there i think the the thing about him looking through the carriage it's the fact that like this movie is so i mean early hollywood where it was like everything's like a proscenium and you just are watching the picture mm-hmm. so just anytime flat, flat, they flat, flat. Uh, yeah anytime they change it and you're like looking from a character's a point, of, point view, of view you're like whoa Ooh, this is yeah. so crazy which is very fun um super quick my favorite punchline is when bellini is about to like sword fight uh horace and then madge comes in the room thinking that she would like clear up everything but then she was like i just wanted to see watch the fun i wanted to watch the fun yeah she's so funny so funny i think the best oh oh, oh, go ahead go ahead ahead. i think the best quote is um never again will i allow women to wear my dresses by the lady oh yeah Uh, yeah very funny very funny molly Best joke. Best, best joke, or you can go to your closer. Either one, whichever you prefer. Um, best joke is Bates uh, saying a bunch of crap to the Italian uh, cop. Oh, yeah. Oh, classic. So this was not in the theatrical release. This was like re-added later. Because Mussolini oh. couldn't handle it. <laughs> no, I think it was just uh, they had to wait till the war was over. I, I think they just like cut it so much that they like cut out a bunch of like Gosh, extraneous. I'm trying bits. to do a pivot where my nemesis is going to be Mussolini instead of Judy Dench because I think I... it's a little more topical. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Judy, yeah, yeah. yeah I think Mussolini is definitely more topical than a living person called <laughs> Judy Dench for sure. <laughs> a dame, a dame, mm-hmm. a living dame. Couldn't give a, a dame. Da- a dane. <gasps> Dale. Dane Tremont. Oh, Dale. It's Dale. Dale girl. and Dame. Okay, Molly, what's your closer? My closer is pitch a couple, and I'm the implication is Hollywood couple, mm-hmm. to make a ten min a ten movie series that are all just slight variations on the same plot about the two of them getting together. And couple, I mean, they're actors, not they have to be together in real life. Also, yeah, no, two no, actors you want to see? No, do Isla this. Fisher, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's. Here. I mean, they could be together in real life if you, if you want. I just that's just not part of. Do you the want world. to see ten movies with them? I don't think I want to see ten. Okay, just curious. Well, no, I just percent. yelled about Isla Fisher in Resonant Services last week. Okay, I can go. I have two. I have two. I have two that come to mind because I've kind of noted that <clears throat> they had excellent chemistry when I saw them in in their shows. One is Tatiana Maslany and Charlie Cox. Charlie mm. Hides. Charlie Cox, I think, is the Daredevil. 
Daredevil and She-Hulk. So Daredevil was in the She-Hulk series and their chemistry was insane. I was fully like, I want, I just want 10 more, honestly, 10 more specific She-Hulk Daredevil movies where they play these characters, but they had really good chemistry. So I would do that. The other one would be uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge and uh, Hot Priest. Hot Priest. And I would pay, I would personally executive produce. I would, yeah. I would somehow rig to win the lottery so I could executive produce 10 movies of just those two actors. What is his name? <laughs> his name's not Andrew Hot Scott. Priest. Thank you, Andrew Scott. Yeah. Molly, do you have an answer to your own question? Well, I'd like to say firstly that I would love to pick two women, but Hollywood does not make enough lesbian rom-coms. So I mm-hmm. don't have a great uh, pull for pet. it, but yeah. please somebody put Sarah Paulson in a lesbian rom-com. I oh, will yeah. give you so much money. Um, I am going to say, since I keep bringing it up, Jonathan Bailey oh. and Simone Ashley, <laughs> season two of Bridgerton. I cannot emphasize enough that you should all watch it. Mm-hmm. And as my runners up, I'm going to say Zoe Deschanel and Jake Johnson, because also mm. fantastic chemistry on New Girl. So those are my two picks. Brandon. So I uh, wasn't sure how to interpret this. So I did not pick a romantic couple. Oh, uh, that's fine too. Right? And, I, and I did pick two women. Yes. <gasps> And uh, in the event that this is my only appearance ever on this podcast, I want to make sure that it's just out of nowhere. And it really uh, tells everyone the moment in time that we are recording this. So the, my immediate my immediate thought is... Uh, Rudy Greiner. <laughs> Adam. What? Well, very important. Very moment important. in time. Moment, moment in time. time. Yes. Moment in time. Great. News of the week. Absolutely. Other pod. Uh but I wrote down, I'm going to read the names, I don't get them wrong, but I'm going to, I'm going to say some Simona Tabasco and Beatrice Grano, which are Lu- Lu- Lucia and Mia from White Lotus Season 2. From White Lotus Season oh. 2. I would watch oh. any, an excellent example of platonic friendship. Uh, yeah. I would watch any, like when you, when I read the prompt, I thought I would want to see them do everything together because they are real life, real friends, if you didn't oh. know. Mm. Okay. Um, Built in chemistry. I'm very deep in that right now because yeah. I'm... Gay. I've only watched like the first thirty something gay in twenty twenty two, and that's mm-hmm. my entire personality for the last three weeks. So. I've, I've only watched like the first three episodes, so you can't say more about the, the absolutely season, not. But, but call yeah. me afterwards. We'll we'll deep dive. Okay, okay. But that's mine. Did I pass? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, your answer is better than mine. Unfortunately, I am going through a BL spot, so my answers are going to be South Korean actors. I hate to tell you, I'm so sorry. I'll show you a picture, and then we'll include them in the um. We'll include them in the we'll notes. We'll share links where you can watch them. Notes. Technically, they've already starred in two BLs together, so they've got two of the ten down already. Okay. So just give so Adam eight more. Just give me eight more. Honestly, give me 600 more, because I, <laughs> I want them to be a real-life couple. I'm still in love with them. So Kim Ji Woon um, is, like, the hot one. He's, like, the broody one. He's the broody one. Dark, and then dark. Yoon So Bin is the, the like, cutie one. Yeah, he's yes. that. So yes. in the vampire one. In the vampire one, he's the vampire. Edward, and, that is and that's, that's the awesome. pure blood human who he has to. <laughs> okay, I won't get into it. Anyway, those are my two. Um, for like a Western couple, it honestly, this is going to be boring. It probably is um, Emma and Ryan. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they're already, they've already begun the series for they've sure. They've already begun the series, so they can just keep going. But I really like them together. Or I'll also take um, 10 of Zendaya and Tom Holland. Oh yeah. oh yeah that's good because they're also f- so fun together and i don't love her as mary jane more more than i don't like this tri- this version's interpretation of mary jane yeah. just because she's a little too broody for me but um, i've never seen any of the spider-man movies i just love them as a couple because yep. i famously love tall women and short men so oh yeah short kings short kings, kings. if we're doing like platonic just like How tall comic- stare? oh he was five, five nine, nine. And Ginger was 5'4". Oh. Okay. So not a short king. No. Not a short king. Shorter than me. Um, if we're doing like platonic like comedy duos, I loved uh, Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy in The Heat in, so much that heat. I would love to watch them do like, because she, she, they do a great one and two. Like Sandra did such a great job like being like the the partner to Melissa McCarthy. Was that Heat like, or Spy? That was Heat. Oh. Spy was um, Rose McGowan and Melissa McCarthy. Rose McGowan, Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne, sorry, sorry. It's like, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Brandon, for Brandon. Thank you so much for joining with us for three hours talking about a hundred-minute movie. <laughs> um, it's important to 
you know, it's more to discuss the classics, as you've said. Absolutely. It's important to remember the classics, discuss know the classics, references. know your references. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there if anything? We don't you... use these references. We lose, we lose these, references. these references. Wow. And that's your platform running that's in 2024? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Is there okay. anything you'd like to plug? Anything you'd like to promote? SoundClouds? Mm. Anything like that? Me? Yeah, yeah. No, this is it. No, this um, is it. Listen to <laughs> follow. Yeah. You don't want to promote uh, giving teachers a living wage or anything. Yeah, you I don't want to promote that. I will Any... Always, but I don't. That's not my entire platform. But yes. No. Okay. Thank okay. A teacher, We're anti-union, famously. Thank on a this teacher. Podcast as I established, so thank, you thank cannot a teacher, talk thank about. Thank a teacher. Yeah. And and thank a principal. <sighs> Absolutely. And thank yeah. a doctoral person. A PhD. A PhD. Mm-hmm. Thank the piece of paper that has the PhD on it. Thank you, Molly. Okay, Ma- RJ, and, and, now, and now Adam will perform the piccolino. <laughs> no, the problem is, is I only remember the tune to Cheek to Cheek. Mm. Da, da piccolino, da 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 Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. Welcome back to Seabrook. Humans, zombies, and werewolves have learned to live together. Let's go sunning. It's a good Seabrook! Seabrook! Seabrook is a part of our pack. Forever. Every morning. We are going to be together. Forever. Oh no! It's a UFO! Whoa! We have a problem. Last time outsiders swooped into Seabrook, our Moonstone was stolen. They're probably here to clone me to create an unstoppable cheer force. Me? (laughs) Why are they really here? These angry beings may not give us their planet. Outsiders mess with our turf. We need to find their most precious thing. Our pack won't go down without a fight. They're here to take what's ours. Discovering voices, building worlds, the Ampliverse.